companies when gone. they are not here to defend themselves. More importantly, there, when he comes back, you all will defend me and say that, like I've been saying nothing but nice things. Oh, for sure. I need sure. you to know that. That is exactly what's happening here. Uh, for those but of you that have joined us on TikTok as well, uh, we're talking about uh, Nobuhiko Obayashi's 1977 horror comedy thing, um, House, which was recommended by Nalbus himself. Which, and, hey. obviously, you know, as he comes back, again, we've been saying nothing but nice things. Lovely things. things. Lovely things. Absolutely. Just um, see, thanks, yep, guys. And all <laughs> the people can... here, can, it, it, all the people here can comment and, and you know, affirm... Oh. That that's exactly what was happening. You guys are so All nice. right. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, we are live on YouTube now as well, so we are good to go whenever you are ready. K okay, man. All right, let's do this. All right. <laughs> um. Um. Hey everybody. Uh. Well. Uh. Here we are. Here we are again. Doing the podcast thing. Doing the. Woo! Watching a. New movie every week, watching this whole thing, you know, um, seeing things, thinking thoughts, you know, just having this time of uh, our lives, you know, just, wow. Um, I'll be honest, guys, it's a little hard to come up with a clever intro when you're not entirely sure you understood the film you watched. And it's one of those moments where you're like, you're sitting in the middle of work and you're like, I got to find something clever to say, but the film is so clever amongst itself. How could I possibly beat anything mm. to possibly get in this position? So I decided to procrastinate. And anyway, here's Naf. Hey, uh, so question for you guys. I'm Naf. Thank you for joining us, guys. Um, we're one with the films, as uh, Keem was saying as well. Um, but question for you two. When you watched this film, were you also waiting for the old man with the cane to show up and fix all of the broken people? Because I was. I was. I always, there it is. I always, oh, you, you, uh, well, we got Jim that was saying that he was, you know, I'm always waiting for a man with the cane to come and fix all my problems. Uh, That's me. That's me. Well... You didn't come with the cane, so that you you came, but you didn't come with the cane. So fair, it's fair. one of those things where you know it, it's it's we gotta spicy we gotta, today, okay? Um. You know, I'm I'm coming in hot. Uh, but the but the thing is that as we go forward, hi guys, listen, I'm Movie K Man the Third. You know me, I do the thing. I'm here, but you know who's also here? The motherfucker who showed us this movie. The guy who, when asked the challenge, which was say, show, I believe the words were Naf said to Jim, show me something. What was the words that you said? Uh, uh, recommend me a film you guarantee I haven't seen. And he, boy, did he do it. And like, and you know, it's one of those things where I, like, I would have added, what's a film that you never get to recommend to somebody that you get to force them to watch? But see, the, the issue like... with that is I'm pretty sure that Jim here recommends this film to everyone. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I and I can see why. Because this is, my, this is the most Lynchian, like, yeah. film, which is always, for me, a very gray area of cinema, where I'm like, I don't know what I was supposed to understand. Yeah. But I Good. know I had a great time. All joking aside, uh like all, all bits, all things like that. Jim, it has been so great to like have you. Obviously, you've always been in like our like lives and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. you picked a wild film. So to talk about this wild film, do you care to introduce yourself? Tell everybody kind of what your vibe is, what you do, what you kind of introduce to people who may not know you. Come on, just go talk to everybody. Do yeah. it. Okay. Give them so a slice. Hi, I'm Jim. Uh, online, I go under Nalbus Why? everywhere. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, that's baffled me for my entire life. Where did it, um, like, did you just I came make out, it up? I came out of the womb and I was like, you know what? My online persona is going to be uh, Nalbus. Did you come out of the womb with that moustache as well? Because it's glorious. I did. That's true. I it did, really fits actually. the vibe. 
it's very tickly and it's very very beautiful and I'm, I'm loving it right now. For those um, of you no, on I'm, TikTok or listening uh, on Spotify afterwards, you won't actually get the video side of this. But if you are live, you'll notice that uh, Jim also has a, a film filter on his uh, actual camera just yeah. to just up the ante That's on the pretentious true. film snob. He really wanted yeah. us to know who he was today. <laughs> Motherfucker really brought and, something out of the out of the Criterion collection for us. Like, and and dude, Kay, fun I fact am from for the you. Criterion collection, baby. <laughs> He's the Criterion <laughs> Collection <laughs> King, but Kay, fun fact for you. I know you haven't actually gotten around to seeing the film yet. But the film that I watched with I have Luke. Seen it. No, no, no. Different oh, thing. That. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay? Oh. Never been a problem for you previously, all of a sudden. You didn't watch the film? <laughs> Um, but yeah, the well, film, sorry, guys, gotta... <laughs> the film that I watched uh, with Luke likes games, One Cut of the Dead. I know you haven't gotten mm. around to that yet. My understanding yeah, is that Jim here recommended that film to Luke. So by association, of course you did. now that you've uh, seen House, you understand what you're getting not... yourself into. <laughs> um, Luke showed me that film. Just, ah, just, other way just around. As well. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Luke. He got that wrong. He's not actually uh-huh. your friend. One Cut of the Dead, my beautiful baby boy. It is. It is. I'm so. We, you still need to watch it, and then we need to do like a catch up episode of your reactions to that. Oh, yeah, anyway, sorry, it. Luke, oh for disrespecting you so much. You have and I know it's your baby. It's your baby. Um, but yeah, uh, I love it. I watch the movie. I love it. I make it a movie, and I love it. I talk about the movie. That's, that's I agree. I um, agree, man. Like, 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 it's so cool. Like, as I'll tell you, one thing with this podcast that at least what we've loved doing is all joking aside. It's like seeing films like this you really realize just how much stuff is out there mm-hmm. like just how many ideas have already been had and you're like damn i thought we were like doing parodies and satire and shit like that now i felt that like it's like damn they were way ahead of like this is this is taika level of like very like quirkiness like this is like i, I don't even know what to i don't even know what to call it like so well, i guess yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, well you, I mean, you seem like you were coming in hot with continuing a thing. I was going to transition us, but please. you're more than welcome to come in with this. I just, I just, I, yeah, you know, just, yeah. Um, I feel like well, that's going to be a theme. I think um, maybe I should explain a little bit of what we're doing here for the uninitiated, uh, and then let's I kick probably. back around and, um, and, and get into it. What do we reckon, boys? I think that works. Yeah, Why don't you do go that? At it. All right. All right. Cool. Don't come at me so hot. All right. Um, well, no, fine. Hurry um, up! Get to it! <laughs> you yeah, son of a bitch! Well, I'm trying now. All right, guys. So, um, welcome to season two, episode twenty-eight of One with the Films. Um, this is the weekly watch list, and for the uninitiated, the weekly watch list is where Kay and I force each other to watch films uh, that are sort of our personal favorite films, with the intention of introducing each other to something that we adore. You know, sharing the love a little bit. Yeah, we're not going to circle jerk the same films all the time. Yeah, The Dark Knight wasn't that good i'm sorry but um if by chance we could introduce you to something new as well then that's a pretty big win as well it's a win for all parties uh and from time and to time we we'll also introduce no keegan no i'll mute you i'll mute you <laughs> don't you Shut even the fuck up. Shut <laughs> the fuck up. there is no rebuttal to this okay we've established my opinion is correct that's how this channel works fair enough but from time to time, we'll also bring on someone with much better taste than us to introduce us to one of uh, their favorite films and then jump on in with us and talk about what makes it special to them. It's a perfect little slice out of the day where a bunch of nerds, as you can see here, uh, get to obsess over the art hey. form that we adore. And we're so glad to have you with us. So thank you for joining us if you're live on TikTok, if you're live on YouTube, or if you're checking us out anywhere you get your podcasts. Welcome. Um, if you are in chat, please feel free to send through any questions, talk about the film. We love to engage with you guys as we go. Um, but... That being said, we've mentioned a couple of times um, what film we're watching. And I'll just quickly uh, move over to chat for a second as well, because Marley has seen the film, and he says House is wild, but he's only finished it once. Um, and he also says he can't grow a stash. He also subscribed to you, Nalbus. He said The Dark Knight is mid. So, Y'all got all, real all wins, with all your wins. career discussions. <laughs> I'm just saying it's easy to sit on this side of history and talk about the Dark Knight being mid when it changed cinematic history. Forever. What I will say to you I mean, is like, like, if Christopher I'm not Nolan is the best thing since sliced bread, I think Chris Nolan can be overrated as hell. But I think that like it's one of those things and we've dropped down to three viewers. Uh, <laughs> well, and so- I'm I'm gonna put a thought out there for you guys. Um and this is the oh, correct the correct thought. Um, oh, please do. <laughs> if Christopher Nolan 
Never touched Batman. Okay, ever. Spider-Man 3 is a masterpiece. Thank you. I don't see the connection. And if my and if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a bike. Like, you know, it's one of those things where uh, it's No, like... it's uh the Batman Begins came out before Spider Man three, and then Sony course corrected to try and make Spider Man three darker and failed miserably. You know you know what also oh. would have helped make Spider Man three great? Shut up. Shut up. Spider Man three being great. <laughs> like it's you know, I think I think one could have, you know, sincerely helped the other. No, no, no. But I kid, I kid. I do, I do love those movies. Um, but we've brought a film greatest today. Um, if you guys are following along, you'll see that it's the greatest film you've never seen. And here to tell us uh, a bit about what film we're watching um, and why the hell he's done this to us, uh, we have Jim. <laughs> okay. Straight from the Criterion Collection himself. Jim, um, actually... do you care to show off that nice Criterion Collection for our audio-based podcast? This like, is can you just show a, that? Uh, a, a Eureka disc from the Masters of Cinema collection. This is a UK Ooh. release. It does have a Criterion release. However, a Criterion isn't in Australia. So, it's unfortunately, fuck us, I haven't I got it yet. But I am looking forward to getting that as well because apparently it's got a very nice cover, a nice back cover. But it's got a little booklet. This is great for audio listeners, by the way. It's got a little booklet here. Oh, no, that's really what we're, cute. that's the whole thing. Well, you gotta, you gotta oh crack that. Is it like you a gotta... storybook? Yeah, a little well, storybook. No, no, you gotta this, put this it right next to your mic. You gotta get yeah. ASMR that shit. You gotta get it right, yeah. Can you guys feel that book that I've got? <laughs> in the of the little uh, Masters of Cinema collection. Oh, I've never um, been so turned oh, yeah, on in my life. I feel, I feel that book right I there. have. I, I have <laughs> personally been very turned on. Um, see, yeah. see, see, now, this is that moment. If we get Chris and Steph from Dark Side Divas, I have no idea what the fuck this is gonna turn into. It's gonna be If wild. this is us on a good day. Yeah. It's like, and, anyway, so there we are. So continuing on, Jim. So obviously... How did yeah. you? How the fuck did you discover this film? This okay. This was actually um, I, I'd heard of this film. Well, I, more, more so, I'd seen the poster for this film on Letterbox a couple years back. Um, it's this really striking poster. It's the orange poster with sort of the cat, um, and it sort of piqued my interest a little bit. I didn't really know anything about the film, um, but it wasn't until I met my 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 partner. Um, she we were on a walk together and I remember she, we were talking about horror films and she mentioned this film that she'd watched a few years ago called House. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, interesting. And then she sort of goes on to tell me that like, uh, yeah, it's like they edited this in PowerPoint. It's like <laughs> kind of like they made a meme in the seventies. Um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's, that's interesting. Um, and I, I didn't really think much else of it. Like I sort of was like, okay, maybe we'll watch this at some point. It sounds interesting. Um, and then maybe six months to a year later, just on a whim, we just decided to watch the movie. Um, and from her perspective, I think she always sort of saw the film as like, oh, it's funny. It's silly. It's just a funny little film that I watched a couple of years back. It's, and it changed it's, you it's as nothing. a human, didn't it? It literally changed I imagine, me as a freaking human. I I'm imagining you guys sitting maybe. next to each other, like cuddling on the couch. And she's well, just like, ha, yeah. ah, this is so funny. This is so silly. And you're just like... Bro, my brain's breaking. This is this is changing the way I view cinema forever. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was, yeah, I like, I was stunned by. It. We got to the end of the film. I was like, that might be the, that might be the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Like, I was like absolutely like amazed. I was instantly like, yeah, five stars. It's incredible. I love this. Um, I love that. And then since then, I've seen the film like fifteen other times because I've shown it to like a shitload of friends. Sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've seen it a lot. Um, so it usually it holds a special place in your heart. Yeah, and, and, and to me, it's the reason I keep showing the film to people, and, and especially you, lovely gentlemen, today, uh, is is because I love to vicariously revisit it and re-experience it for the first time. There's nothing quite like that first sort of introduction to the film, and now I've sure. seen the I've seen the film many times now, and I've sort of gone deep into analysis on the film at this point to the point where I sort of understand all the shit that you guys are probably very confused about and I could probably help you guys understand it. I'm maybe. very excited. That will be episode. very helpful. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, for yeah, my letterbox review for this, I literally wrote on it, for the rest of my life, I'm going to replay in my head Miley Cyrus sing screaming, What does it mean? Oh yeah, beautiful. I love that one. <laughs> it's a, this is, I just... It's wild. Um, well, you know what, Miley Cyrus? Right. Like, I don't is, know what it means. That, <laughs> that is very, that is very much this. Uh, like, the vibe of this film, yeah, is so utterly ridiculous mm -hmm. that bonkers even. 
I, I have a comparison that I will make, which will probably make the Criterion Collection shudder, but I'll wait until we get there. Uh, and um, uh, <laughs> that, that was a noise. That was a great noise. That felt like we need to something we need to that... Clip that. We need to clip that. That's Just... pretty great. <laughs> You're it's like it's guys. funny because that kind of stuff happens in the film too, which is out of nowhere. It's yeah, just like a whistle like, and then hard happens. cut. You're like, <laughs> huh? and you're like, you're like, what the fuck is this? I'm this this slightly guys. different shot thing that's going with the blinking of the eyes, and I'm like, oh my oh, brain yeah. hurts. <laughs> my brain hurts. Like yeah. I've been trained to watch film a certain way, and oh my goodness. Yeah. So well, Naf, you want to go, but so we can get full on into this. Do you want to go into, like, little fun facts about this film? Well, I would love to, actually, but I don't know anything. Um, I've actually, for today, bestowed that honor upon Jim here. So what we're probably <gasps> going to do is, because this film is a bit, um, like, it requires discussion and understanding, well, what the yep. structure will probably look like for today, uh, we are going to dive deep into spoilers, and, like, not that there really you are crazy spoilers do for this. Like, the, I don't the, think that spoilers film, would ruin your enjoyment of the film. No. However... This film's an experience, yeah. Yeah, going into it and experiencing it before listening to uh, Three Losers Break It Down might be a better experience for you. So if you are listening on demand, I'd recommend that you pause now, head on over to wherever you find movies. Uh, in Australia, you might need to jump on a uh, boat, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but it's... my place. We can watch it. <laughs> there we go. So <laughs> Just Jim will post his address. We can watch it. On, we can watch it on VHS too. You know, we could, we, you know, we can throw it out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get Jim to go through some fun <laughs> facts for us. Uh, he might ask us a few questions about our experience with the film, uh, and then we'll yep. dive into a bit more explanation about it, try and understand it a bit better. And hopefully, we come out the other side changed people. Uh, so Jim, yeah, I so. <laughs> tell us a little <laughs> bit about Nobuhiku Obayashi's 1977 Japanese horror flick, House. Okay, cool. I'm going to run through some fun facts here. Feel free they to better jump be fun. in. Oh. If they're not, you won't, you won't come back. Uh-oh. Um, so feel free to jump in. If you want to zoom in on something and, and ask something, just just jump right in. Awesome. Um, but let's zoom through these right now. So um, this was Nobuhiko Obayashi's direct, uh, directorial debut. Uh, having thousands of TV commercials and a few short films under his belt already. Um, this film was released on July 30th, 1977. Uh, Let's and zoom in a... there. Yeah. Okay. July 30th. What other great things have happened on a July 30th? Okay, 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 you know, I... Okay, okay, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, then there we get see, see the research is there. Anyway, continue. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, it's Lawrence Fishburne and Arnold Schwarzenegger's birthday. There Perfect, go. there we go. Happy All right, birthday. solved. Happy birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> um, which today's not. Okay. We should have, we should have said this for, for another month, hey? Um, anyway. No. Mm, so. Uh, so this film, uh, it wasn't re uh, released until 2009 uh, for American and European distribution uh, through Janus Jeez. Films. Whoa. Uh, so it was, for a very long time, just completely unavailable anywhere. I think it might have been available through... Possibly like private screenings uh, that people sure. can access. Uh, some like film buffs and files got got a hold of it and could watch it at specific showings, but for wide distribution, it just wasn't available till like wow. two thousand nine. Um, so the film's primary influence uh, that led to the creation uh, was the nineteen seventy five film Jaws, directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, that explains all the people Japan... being eaten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys don't want to. Like we're just gonna brush brush aside that. We'll just do that. Um, oh, well, anyway. oh, oh no, well, no, we're gonna dive into it like in Jaws, but we're gonna just wait until like the boat has left the harbor. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll, we'll we'll continue. So, um, it opened in Japan to generally negative reviews from critics, but it was a box. Hey, hey, hey! Because you're they didn't the understand boy. it. Because they didn't you're understand not the it. Boy. See, I imagine you're the not director the boy. standing outside the theater going, "What did you think?" And they're going, "I hate it." It's no, you didn't get it. Fuck off. Next one. What did you think? I hated it. No, you didn't get it. Fuck off. <laughs> Just on repeat. Yeah. Um, so, um, but it was a box office success um, and a hit with teens and young adults. So they were rushing to the movie theaters to see this damn movie. Um, they were freaking loving it. Um, so, uh, Obiyashi shot house with seemingly no storyboard for about two months. Um, the film was greenlit by Toho uh, mere hours after Obayashi's pitch. 
uh, but took two years for production to begin. Um, and there's sort of, sort of stories about that, which I'll probably get into with the history. Um, but the reason for that is because Toho didn't um, hire uh, directors externally. So the reason they didn't actually bring him on board because he wasn't under their contract. So mm. uh, there was this sort of like iffy stuff there. But That's not a very fun fact. That one's kind of boring. Yeah, no, that's some first of that's Like a, that's contractual a stuff? Like, okay. Yeah. Hey, Loser. we love legalities and shit. Um, so, mm-hmm. uh, in between that time, that two year span, Obayashi advertised the film through business cards, a radio play version, a manga adaptation, and Godaigo's full soundtrack for the film. So, that was all done before the film even went into production. Wow. Um, all the actresses in the film were unprofessional actors. Um, all but one were simply models Obayashi previously worked on for commercials. Uh, and to help direct the actors, Obayashi would play the soundtrack on set to help build the atmosphere of the scenes. And that's my fun facts, everyone. Wow. Hey. I mean, it's really interesting. Um, like, yeah, there's so there's so much there. Um, it's cool. I'm very interested that with a film particularly like this, he was able to start filming like without a storyboard because it seems like something that's like it 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 gives the aura that it's meticulously planned out. And then also yep. they made it up on the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. how do you hit that balance so fucking well? Well, I, I, I think a big part of that would have been that two-year span of Obayashi being sort of deep in the source material. Um, he did, as I say, he did the radio play, he did the manga. So yeah. I, like, he didn't have a storyboard, but I... I imagine he had a lot of the images in his head yeah and and because he was a commercial um like he made tv commercials he could work quick and he could be inventive and Mm. quick and 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 have sort of like these um very eye-catching visuals and just he would just know how to sort of do that and then jump into the editing bay and just yeah like achieve that look that he wants to go for i had a question about that as well but i want to jump into marley said uh, in chat he said um House has the same critic response as Fast and Furious. So goated. <laughs> the first one? I guess so. Oh, oh, because the people didn't like it and then young people went to Exactly, play. yeah. And then it popped off. Uh, and then they made you know, 10. That's, the, that's, the, that's what we got to really think about here. House <clears throat> is the same as Fast and the Furious in <laughs> yeah. every respect. Yeah. Well, every in the Vin Diesel cameo. It's about family. Come on. Dude. It's all about family. Family. Um... But I wanted to ask, obviously, so Nobuhiku is the director of the film. It. Shut up. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> did he take on any other responsibilities? Like, was he editing as well? I know usually when it's like a first-time yep. director, sometimes they're director, editor, writer. Like, what was his... He was writer, director, and editor. He, nice. he did everything. And special effects. He did everything himself. Like, nice. That was uh, all him. Everything. Fun fact for you, Keegan. Um, Ryan Johnson did that on the movie Brick. I mean, is it makes sense. Your, is, is this your attempt to connect this to Last Jedi? And Ryan Johnson also made another fantastic film, <laughs> which he wrote. Yeah, directed. called Knives Out. So <laughs> anyway, <it. laughs> so there we go. Oh. Like, uh, and so uh, you know, moving on from that, that <laughs> we will get back so, to it. Don't you worry. I will find a way. Oh, oh I. Oh, it's when in doubt. Much like, like the Last Jedi, the critics a... and the um, response from uh, the yeah. audience were wildly dead. different. <laughs> It's just mm. opposites, though. We you know, in Last there. Jedi, the audience didn't, and the critics liked. In House, critics hated, audience loved. But it is very similar. And Last Jedi is all about the duality of life and opposites and how they attract. So, long story short, House is a masterpiece. So is the Last Jedi. You're welcome. He's done it. He's done it again, baby. Uh, Wee. Just, just continue, Jim. It's it's fine. It's um, we're all fine here. How are you? Um, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's one of the best, most subtle jokes in Star Wars. It's, We're fine it's one here. of the best. How are you? It's, it's, it's What's the one I think I quote. It's, it's, I think it's the, it's the one that I quote the most often. It's that, or that's not how the force works is, uh, well, it's we've established the, you don't know lines. how the force works, Keegan. So no, I know perfectly well how the force works. You lift rocks with it anyway. <laughs> Uh, and so, so um... back on House. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. So he took on the role of director, writer, and editor, yeah. um, which is insane. That is a lot of work for one person. Obviously, the, the two years before production would have meant he had a pretty solid script before he started. Um, yeah. But I always do like when the director takes on editing as well um, because mm-hmm. it just it feels very connected. And sometimes that's the case. Like obviously, I was mentioning with like Brick before, and then sometimes you just have usually the director is really hands on in the edit bay, but then oft times it's not usually the case. Um, but yeah, it is really cool to see them have their hands in 
everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. This so, is an Obayashi film, like, through and through, yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I'd love to touch on, like, first about the film is let's yeah. talk about, like, the look. Um, because yeah. I saw something in, like, the description, because I tried to stay away from descriptions and things like that, mm. but I saw, like, across... <laughs> Thanks, Keegan. <laughs> I saw across um, the, like, on one of the blurbs, I think on Letterboxd, where it talks about, like, it's a... It's uh, Nobuhiko Obayashi's, like, fairy tale drama, something like that. And the word yep. fairy tale really stuck with me. Because when I'm watching yep. it, it feels yeah. like it's straight out of a storybook. Um, it's really interesting that almost every background is a matte painting that's been superimposed. It really gives the film a very unique look. And particularly, I think I was messaging you last night as I was seeing it, like, those early shots, sunset shots... Um, anything with, yeah, like a sky in the background is just ethereal and otherworldly. It is beautiful. Yeah, it has like a, like I usually describe it as, um, it's like got like dream logic. It mm. looks like a dream. Um, uh, and like I usually describe the film as like feeling like it was shot in a liminal space. Like it's shot within sort of a world between worlds. It's sort of like it's not real, but it also it, it is like their reality. Mm. So like the sunsets and stuff, they look like these beautiful like beautiful skies. But then you're just like, oh, it's just a, a wall that's been painted, and it sort of creates this really sort of like uh, like uncanny feeling to the whole thing. Yeah. What do you think about Should that, Keegan? I... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was about to say like I so going with everything that you've been saying up to this point. Like a lot of that makes sense, and I think that's really interesting when someone takes because because this what I love about when directors are you know it's their first feature things like that. A lot of times it is projects that they they've been <laughs> pressure cooker like like putting in a pressure cooker yeah. in like the basement for years and just trying to get something to work. It's why it's like if you go to the first film of anybody, it's so interesting to see what raw elements were there and like and it's just interesting to see where people's imagination is because it's before they either felt like they had to change for other people or it's like uh it's just interesting to see and what i love about this like all joking aside i i love creativity when i see it like and this is just creativity on display and seeing this the vibe of this film I had no idea how to make heads or tails of it at the beginning of it, but I I, I don't mind when movies do that because I think that they're like it was consistent in tone all the way through. What it um, what it does though is because I remember it saying something like about that where it was like, oh, it's kind of this love thing, but it's also like a horror movie, and I was like, <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself what into, was, and then yeah. I saw the style and all of the and it makes sense when you said oh they were not professional actors because i'm like i could tell <laughs> and it's like it's that moment where it's like you just have this moment where it's like it worked for like the tone of the film but then it felt like they had like two legit actors because i was like there are two people who are throwing their whole like oh that's actually like you're adding subtlety yeah into this yeah he put his whole obusi into this that? I, yeah. I I'm going to blank on the names, but okay. it's yep. like the it's it's the person that was supposed to be her, her new mom. Mm. Uh, like was, she, uh, oh god, her name's like I, I can't remember, but yeah, the new mother. Yeah, yeah. The new mom, the new mom that like they're going to her auntie's place. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I would say her auntie as well. Like had like like some good acting chops with that too. She, yeah, the auntie was. Uh, I haven't seen anything else from her, but up until that point, she was a very sort of like famous actor in Japan. Uh, so bringing her on board was sort of like a big deal for the film. Oh, huge. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else was sort of these unprofessionals that were sort of involved in it. Um, but she was sort of like the big sort of draw to like come see our movie. It's, she's in this. Uh, but yeah. Well, but and to your point, I had a reference I was bringing up earlier where I'm like, this again may make the criterion. Cri I, it's this is a 50 50 because I mean it as a full on compliment. Because when I was younger, I think I was in teens when this video came out on YouTube where it was like, <laughs> there was that, do you guys remember? It was like a parody of like Sesame Street or something. Oh, and it was do this, hug me, I'm scared? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was that the so exact quick. vibe. Yeah. That was exactly the vibe 
I got yeah, from this nah, film was it's like it that. lures you into this false sense of security, security of being like, yeah. oh look, we're kind of goofy. <laughs> oh, there's like a map painting. Oh, there are weird like circle yeah. transitions, but it's like, oh, it's kind of all crazy, kooky, uh, dissevered head. Like you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, one I'm of those gonna, things, it, kind of like uh, a random alley appearing in the background. Hi. It's, it's, uh, it's very it's, in line it, with what happened in House, though. It, like it, this, honestly, this is very on brand for the it's, film. Um, there oh, was one know. transition towards the end of the film where oh. um, one of the main girls is sitting there, the and thing? she's just kind of zoned out. And then a man oh, pops his uh, head in, starts eating noodles, and then it pulls back out, yeah, and it yeah, cuts to him in a yeah, different yeah, location yeah. eating the noodles. And I was like, down. what just happened? <laughs> what, was the, what was the choice there? Yeah. Wait, what's yep. going on? Should we... <laughs> yep, so back to it. Like, my... my, my... <laughs> Yep, there was a severed head biting an ass in like yeah. in that moment, and that that was like, all right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. She like as Ali is saying, like <laughs> Ali watched it with me last night, and okay. uh, she was like, that woman had like it all. <laughs> At the beginning of this film, I'm like, there are seven different pornos that start off the exact same way, and I'm like, just like the exact same way. Like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ass. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Yeah. okay as as my as my wife is saying it's one of those hear. moments where where uh, yeah i'm gonna repeat what she's saying because she's not near the mic uh and so the whole thing was that there there is a it starts off they're calling each other by the names like fantasy and yep. gorgeous yep. so it's already porn star names and okay. so it's like <laughs> already going with that. that okay you know what i mean and then they go off and being like, it's just these two women talking to each other and taking photos of one another and taking this thing. And I'm like, okay, that's porno sure. number one. Uh, and then there's porno number two, which is like, okay, we entered a school. And there are two, and it's like, they're just like talking about this whole thing. I'm just saying that this is like, th these are all setups for this moment. And then it's like this moment of the way that she greets her dad that is clearly her same age. <laughs> That, like, is, like, or, like, maybe a couple years older than her. But, like, it's, like, that we tried to age her down for the film. But, sure. like, he's not quite as old as we would like him to be. I, I did, um, as she runs up to him and he, like, catches her in his arms, I was a little bit, yeah, like... Yeah, that was it. Huh. <laughs> yeah, you a weird oh, relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th th like, there I'm is... just obviously just joking, but it's, like... <laughs> it, it, it's uh... Bye, Allie. <laughs> it's fine. Um, and, well, and so, uh... uh... In, uh, in chat, uh, Darth Man says uh, that he thought of another movie. People may not know it all. Space Truckers. Um, and yeah, then we had YC in chat say, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is so good. Uh, and then yeah, Darth Man like, came back guess, and said, guess... Space Truckers, what? Jennifer's Body. Um, there are so many yep. movies that feel like porn. <laughs> uh, and so, YC like... asked us as a group, uh, who is our favorite girl? And I'm assuming they mean oh, there we go. in... Like, we in the movie like the as a producer in general instead of seven no yeah, yeah. who's a favorite fu. girl oh, uh, i don't know who's the favorite crush um <laughs> kung fu obviously it is kung fu okay. mine was kung fu <laughs> okay so that is like literally any any person that watches this movie i've not met a single person whose who's favorite character isn't kung fu on their initial watch my partner's favorite is um melody uh the one i did that like melody too that, that is yeah. she is she is great yeah she she's like oh melody's just like really goofy um my, my favorite character and this has been sort of like as i sort of revisit sure. it and, and sort of understand it is uh fantasy i i, I think fantasy is sort of fantasy in a very, is pretty great yeah she's like an integral character i think sort of thematically in the way she sort of like perceives what's going on in the film she's mm. the only one that can actually see sort of and, and perceives the, the 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 strange things that are happening and everyone else is sort of like very ignorant to the fact and it's sort of this like really ironic thing that she's fantasy she has the wild imagination yet she's the one that's able to come face to face with the absurdity that's actually like happening in the moment um which is that's like a whole sort of thing i, I want to get into like further yeah. down the track but like yeah, I, I love fantasy for that reason. I think she's a really integral character and kind yeah, of a totally. movie character. I think it's a really great guess, choice. And uh, Darth yeah, Man and says guess, that uh, Jennifer Tilly was his girl, and YC said that um, <laughs> theirs is Melody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I could see that's, as well. And, that's my partner. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. And, and so, but like my my thing with this, in like kind of going with the. Um, 
the idea, I guess, um, what uh, I guess with the kind of don't hug me, I'm scared kind of comparison, the thing that yeah. I felt with this film was it did a really good job at balancing that line of never losing the tone. Like it didn't all of a sudden become a horror movie or it didn't all of a sudden stop being goofy. You know, like yeah. it, 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 it was did a, a really voice. interesting job of in a very unique way that I'm like, I think there's a way to do this. And again, maybe it's just there's a lot of horror films that have done this and I just mm -hmm. haven't seen them. But I think that there's a really interesting thing of messing with the audiences. Did I just see what I thought I saw? Mm -hmm. Of like, I just watched that woman climb into the fridge, right? <laughs> Y'all saw that too, right? And then she crawls like, back I, in and she's like, winks at the camera, you know? Like, like, yeah, this. like, yeah. and it's... Did she just open her mouth a... and an eyeball came out? What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, like, or did I just see a skeleton dancing in the corner? Like, mm. it's, it's stuff that's like... I feel like there's so much in here that you don't even notice on a first watch of being like, mm -hmm. oh, that's weird. That's different. That, sh that shouldn't be the way that it is. And I look at it and I'm like, man, I think that this is, this movie can get... I think that's a really cool technique. And I think yeah. you can truly do that on an unnerving level of like... I, I think Insidious... I remember my buddy talking about Insidious did, did that a little bit where, where it was like you would see something and they would just be like, nope, there wasn't even a music cue there. It just, it's there. And they cut back to, and it's there. Um, and it's like, that is so scary to me. Is the concept of like, it's not a jump scare. It's just there. It's yeah. playing on, 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 con on conventions of like what we understand cinema to be and sort of breaking that. And it like, it makes us react differently to it. Yeah. Well, that's what this film does the entire of, like, time. You, yeah. you think about when this, cause I think the thing that throws me, that blows my mind is when this movie was made. Mm. Cause you see a lot of these techniques and I would say that like, okay, they saw X movie or they saw this, but the <laughs> fact that this, yeah. you know, happened in the seventies, like seven, like 77, the same year is, as Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> is pretty insane when you think about, like, how kind of ahead of its time this movie yeah. truly is. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, like, I wouldn't go out and say that it's, like... Like, for me, I'm like, it, it's one of those things where it's hard to quantify good or great in general. Yeah. And it's like, because what, what is a good movie? Is it that it fits a Western sensibility? Or is it the fact that it is, like, a entertain you were entertained mm -hmm. like what what is that like and this is one of those films that i just look at and i'm just like this is insane all the way around and as a filmmaker there's so much shit from this i am going to steal like well, at the it, idea of yeah, having like stuff in the frame that wasn't yeah. there well there are um... that we don't say shit about there was yeah, a film that I watched last year that I didn't enjoy too much in first watch, but like upon seeing other people reflect on it and people analyze it, like I want to go back and re-experience it. And that was Tar. Um, and they were talking about how haven't you haven't seen it yet. No, um, I've been so told to see it. <laughs> I watched it, and I just remember being like, "Wow, that feels like a you movie." <laughs> yeah, I just haven't. Yeah, it. it's it's quite pretentious. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, That's but, what I am. Um, Tar, I didn't love i was like i kind of get what they're going for and by the end of the film it was just kind of like it's just not for me but then seeing people's tiktoks of breaking down how it used because i was like i felt uncomfortable in the film and i couldn't figure out why yeah. and it it's using like horror elements and showing us that this person is very paranoid without actually like scaring you like for example yeah. she hears a noise um and she gets up and just walks through the house and you wouldn't notice it on your first watch, but as you slow down the footage in the background, there's just somebody standing in the shadow. And nothing ever happens with that. It doesn't pass, but like I think your eye and your mind picks it up, and you just feel yeah. a bit of like... I don't... It's, just, it's, it's, it's the subconscious. Yeah. It's like purely subconscious like, exactly. like, emo like emotion that's coming out. And Which like, is the stuff that yeah. I think... There's another film that does that in um, a very different way, which, Naf, I, I know you haven't seen that I think you would really enjoy, is The Hurt Locker. Mm-hmm. And the Hurt Locker, as of what? Have you seen that, Jim? No, 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 I haven't seen it. Yeah, well, well, the Hurt Locker does something similar with the war movie style because it's all about IEDs and about disarming bombs. But the way that they do it is, um, Naf, you saw the Big Short, right? No, I've seen. Oh, okay, short, yeah. well, it's same cinematographer. 
Okay. So it's the the, the, the thing is wow. is it's that they have so many of these cameras in the same in the same space that yes. they're cutting to the various things, but it's done in a very unique way that you start to see things the characters don't. And it's that mm -hmm. moment of did I see what I thought I just saw? Yeah. Cause or it's that constant state of I feel like we're being watched. Let's have our guns mm -hmm, ready and drawn. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but we can't tell, are we the person? Like, it's that paranoia yeah. of, I see a guy, okay. I see a guy with a camera on a rooftop. Is that guy bad? Is that guy with this other person? Is that this? Oh, oh. they're communicating. I'm putting that together. But it's like, you feel like you're on the ground doing that. Uh, Chase is in chat. Hey, Chase. Um, and so um... I, I think that um, there was a couple of things in this film that I, I noticed that did that really interestingly and it kind of cuts between you know just like the the usual how you expect a film to be shot into POV shots quite often and one of the first ones was when we're looking at I believe it's fantasy and for some reason it's just cutting between two different angles of oh that. yeah prof and yeah, I remember yeah. going yep. like huh what's going on here and then it just cuts. <laughs> What's this choice? It yeah. cuts to uh, I think it was Prof or Mac just kind of like covering one eye and covering the other. And I was like, oh. Yeah, wink, wink, wink. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and then it cuts back, I and then you're the like, way. you understand the context of the shot, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, it's like a cool shot thing. But know? it hurts your brain for like it a does. second. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there are little sequences so like that. This this film flies in the face of so much about like that. What I what I always found interesting. I, I talk with Naf about this. Like, I think maybe it's the neurospicy, maybe it's the um like just the way i watch film but as a kid i was fascinated when directors or the concept of i heard like alfred hitchcock talk about this or reading stuff like that when i was doing stuff where and doing stop motion you learn how to trick the eye hmm. you learn yeah, the concept yeah. of what the human brain will immediately consider to be real not real yeah it's the it's the it's literally the uncanny yeah the uncanny valley with stuff like that yep. or going okay well what tropes do people find comfort in well what if you break those yeah and this what if you break. take that yep. well like one of my favorites is negative space it's when you use when you use i mean you know it but it's like when the camera yep. is like the subject should be having like okay facing and then you should have more of the yep. like space over here the negative space be in a uh, like a, a way of almost like they're looking towards it but then there will be films that will put their face on the other side yeah, like, of that. And it just creates an unnerving, yeah. my favorite example as Killing the Sacred Deer. But this film did an incredible job of all of that stuff. And I, what I feel with this film, like uh, you were saying, Naf, with this shot with the two eyes, I that was one that distinctly stayed with me, mm. was going, oh, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a few that I marked as notes in my notes in my phone, which I can't get to because I'm live on TikTok. But uh, the <laughs> other ones that I remember is I messaged you about it, Jim, and it's like the first time she goes home and the entire sequence is shot through those glass panes. The glass panes. Yeah. yeah. And it's they're like the kind of ones that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like everything is distorted there. And I remember just being yeah. like, that plus the fact that the background is like either painted or some kind of set dressing yeah, that they've put it's a, up. It's a, I think it's I think it's a painting with that when they've shot big hot lights at it, so that it has a glow mm. to it. Yeah, I think it is a, yeah. Phys a physical like wall that's been painted. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, it's just so beautiful. Like I've not seen things like this. And yeah, the other one that stuck out to me was just before um, they pull uh, the girl's head out of the well. Everything's yes, yes. everything's quite yeah. static, um, yeah. and we don't get heaps of yeah. movement in the camera. And then, yeah, you get that vertigo effect out of nowhere, and it just so feels so unsettling because it's felt like a fairy tale. It's felt like a, almost like a sitcom. Um, yeah. In yep. when I was a kid, uh, you guys may not have heard of this show, but if there's any Latin Americans, they'll have heard of it. But the show called Chavo del Ocho, which is a bunch of adults playing a bunch of kids in like an old Mexican sitcom. Um, mm -hmm. And it felt sure. like that. It's a very, you know, they're wearing very high contrasty clothes, and it's designed to feel like the comics that maybe they read when they were young. Like it just yep. feels like a storybook. And then having that happen slowly, <laughs> silently, um, and out of nowhere was just like I was like, 
mm, I don't know what's where are we going now? What are you doing? And yeah, then it just, yeah. It's, it it's, it's, also it's felt that. like mm-hmm. I was the person that was mm-hmm. watching her and I was getting closer. And then she turns yeah. and looks at the camera and I'm just like, what are you looking at me for? It's like in um, yeah, Fleabag yeah. when the priest looks at the camera and it's like a jump scare. I've like, seen that scene. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> don't look at me. Yeah. It, it's um, really interesting that this film would do that, almost the wink to the camera. And it mm-hmm. proves to me, I'm like, oh, there is something there. There yeah, is something in that brilliance, but not film. just, but not just doing like the idea of like, oh, just breaking the fourth wall because that's really popular in comedy mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. But as you were saying, Naf, it's that same thing of like, Fleabag did a really good example of that where the priest does that, and it's like, oh, it's saying how much the priest notices her. Yeah, it's the only like person that, who that's actually why sees that her. Worked. Yeah, exactly, and it's the thing of going, oh, oh, interesting. They do that through that whole oh, season as really- well. I love the first time that happens when she's like, nobody's talked to me for two hours. And he just cuts it off and he goes, so what do you do? And I was just like, oh, I love them. <laughs> yeah. Just instant. I was yeah. like, oh my God. Beautiful. Great it's, show. It's incredible. Um, I've got, because I've got some favorite moments like listed. But Please. like, obviously, because you guys obviously have favorite moments. I, I'd, I'd like to hear some from, from you, Keeg. But I had the, um, I had that scene like noted down, the, the scene where fantasy is going out towards the well. And especially that dolly zoom, it sort of feels like it's the point of, of which where the 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 the, the, com- the comforting element of the film sort of like dissipates. Yeah. And and it's that yeah, as you as you said, it's like we're walking towards her, and and sort of the walls sort of close in. And and my favorite part of that is like that they're using that dolly zoom. Uh, and I don't know if it's intentional, but like because the sunset is a wall, it's almost like the the sky is closing yeah. in on her too. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, that that and and in that sense of like the film feeling like a liminal space, it almost sort of like brings brings forward the the artifice of the film in in that it's like you're seeing the set come forward and you're and you're realizing that like there's sort of no escape almost, mm. uh, and using sort of the fact that it's on a film set to sort of its advantage. And again, I don't know if that's intentional, but like, that's the feeling I get. And I feel unsafe in that moment. And to me, that's like the scariest part of the film. It's just that dolly zoom. I'm just being like, Oh, everything's like closing in. And it's like, we're in this space we can't get out of. And then obviously the head reveal (laughs) the head, the head's like the big sort of one. Like everyone that watches this film for me is like, the head is like, Oh shit. (laughs) Like, like people don't expect it to get to that point. Yeah. I think that was my legit reaction. Moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that definitely was one of my favorite moments. But did you have any other standout moments you wanted to touch on, Kate? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there are there plenty. Them. I mean, uh, my like the head was certainly the first one that I was yeah, like, the... oh, <laughs> that's creepy. That I like that. Yeah. Um, because I always then appreciate then when something. <laughs> well, it, it's one of those things where it's just it's nice to when you see something that's like, oh, that was really clever. Oh, that was like that was unexpected, and like you yeah. got a legit like, like oh, the, the, the fu- yeah. like it wasn't a jump scare, but it was a deep like what the fuck is like Discom- like it's discomforting. Yeah, when it, it was it was unsettling. It's in the same way that again I talk about that video because that video scarred the, me when I was yeah. like, watching like that like that you know don't, don't, hug, don't hug me I'm scared yep. because it's like it would slowly get to that point of like I don't. What are you I don't doing? Like this. I don't, I don't, I don't like this. Like, what are you, what are you, yep. no, stop. Like it, it almost would make, I've never felt like that's that video. Like, that's why I say I hold it with a high regard because I think that it's really hard. It's easy to scare someone. It's hard to make someone feel I'm, I'm unsettled. Stop. Like, okay. stop. Um, can, you, can, you, Jim, can, we, can we go back to the nice stuff? Yeah. You yep. might know this one. I'm not sure that Kay would have come across it, but like a few okay. years ago, there was a, um, like a, one of those PSA ads that was showing on Australian television um, for okay. domestic abuse. Um, and it I kind of has TV, that yeah. same kind of vibe. It's like, it's it's a lady who's in like a storybook thing and she's just like, um, hey, mm-hmm. what are we doing today? We're cooking. Oh my God. And then dad comes home and he comes in in his suit and he's like, hello guys, I'm home. And then she drops some cups and everything changes. And the mum's like, oh, daddy's just being silly, isn't he? And he's like, yeah, pick up the cups. Like pick up, and he like goes to like runs with yeah, it and it cuts yeah. to black and it's like domestic abuse is never okay and about. I that whoa <laughs> like yeah. yeah it's um it, it, and it's what this from the, and I keep mentioning it it's the uncanny it's the idea mm. of the familiar something that feels like nice and safe um crossing paths with the unfamiliar you're like oh 
Or yeah. this is not how well, it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Chase mentioned um, just in the TikTok uh, chat uh, that it's horror versus terror. And I think that that kind of mm. covers it really well. Like, I feel like terror is just like, it feels like horror is like, I'm trying to scare you. Terror is like, instinctually, I'm scared. That's yeah, the way it, I kind of it, take that. Ter- terror, I do feel is, yeah, it is primal. Mm. Like, I, like, I think that's why it's like, if we're talking about like it's Great weird TV talking show, about like, this movie way. and talking about like yeah primal absolutely um go watch it but um the uh like there was one for me which like will always do as blair witch for me will always be that I haven't seen it that terror neither we might have to do that for um <laughs> oh for we've got because, october coming up horror nights yeah that's what i'm saying like literally th- that is going to be a horror because I need to get caught up. Like I need to see Hereditary, Lighthouse. I need to. See, I'm scared like, to watch all... Hereditary, but um, I did dive into like last year. I watched the most horror films in a year that I'd ever watched before, and it was twelve. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've been diving into I it mean, a little hey, bit more. Yeah. There are some good ones. There are some good ones. I wanna, I wanna do it more because I, mm. I have found, I, I've, as Naf knows, I've actually dived into telling scary stories now. Like doing like, mm-hmm. like what I, the D and D campaign I run it's it's all not all but it's yeah, you're like a very mean dm is very oh i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a brutal dm like I'm <laughs> and, a, um, i consider myself a nice person all of that goes out the window when i'm a dm i'm yeah. like uh, i'm it's that moment of what's in the forest pal what's in the forest go in you want to go it's find out there. um chase also said that horror is jumping out for a scare and terror is what makes you look over your shoulder after a movie agreed mm-hmm. And, and, and with that said, one of the things that I thought was really effective, like, again, you're talking about notable scenes, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. A couple of them that stood out to me. One one was, I was like, is this a metaphor for something? Because I was like, okay. it occurred okay. to me in the middle was one of them was the, uh, was her being tossed around with, like, in the bedroom, like, being tossed around with all this, all the different yeah. furnitures and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the idea of her being with that. And then, but then coming out of it kind of feeling like she had a bit of an exhilaration with it. Yeah, because well, she lives, them, right? She do. lives of... like that. Like that girl lives for like a bit longer, right? So, so you talk about the one that gets crushed by the futons. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. That's that's sweet. Um, she's got the most bizarre amount of like death scenes. She, you think she dies when she sees the doll at first. She sees yeah. the doll, and the light comes up, and then you're like, "What happened?" And then you find out she's been staring at the doll. Then she gets attacked by the futons, and then later in the film, she's in the clock getting crushed. Yeah, it's like really bizarre. Yeah, that's the same character every single time. Um, but yeah, uh, like metaphor speaking, yeah, like what, what what's your take on on that specific? My take on it was at least it seemed more like a because it was also interesting them talking about like bringing in the whole concept of virginity into it and a lot of things yep. like that, like in, in, in that film. So I took it as a sexual abuse kind of thing moment yeah, there possibly. where where it was like with the with the, with the futons and a lot of the feathers and kind of going there and the sounds that was kind of being made it was like it felt very raw and very um unnerving in that regard yeah. where it was like or at least i didn't know if I, it, it's one of those things where i always do kind of assume that at least when it comes to a little bit more pretentious movies something about sex is always being conveyed <laughs> yeah and it's oh, like absolutely. you know it, 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 like because it, it tends to be fucked up uh yeah. and up this one it was like it didn't continue it too much so i didn't lean into it too mm-hmm. much with it but it was a thing where i'm like it's very odd that you have futon like something that's kind of more conveyed with laying around and doing these things like that and it's a yeah. woman that's being literally attacked with a futon yeah I, is there I, I, something I to that. that being said about like this concept of they're only in this house when it's like everybody's a virgin everybody has this thing is there something being said about that experience here is there like well, it was could that just time... in my head like we've got the the teacher who they're all excited for the teacher to show up and obviously he never oh, Mr. Mr. Togo yeah. yeah he never shows up um yeah and that was something that i thought like obviously that, that has some kind of thematic uh you know uh, thing um yeah and it's it's wild that even like when he gets there and the watermelon dude like this is one like these are questions <laughs> that i have right so he shows up and the watermelon guy's like the girls have been eaten he's like do you like watermelons no what do you like bananas he's like <gasps> bananas like banana. and then the watermelon guy turns into a skeleton and mr toho turns into bananas and i was like hmm, uh, hmm yeah bananas okay <laughs> okay he, he went bananas that's all there is <laughs> that's all there is to it 
God damn it. It's like um, when the answer is so simple, and I'm out here being like, is it because... I don't know. We're neuro spicy, Naf. That's what we do. It's that is a literal thinking killing me. Movies. Damn it, autism. Like, I'll tell you. See the thing about pretentious movies to me, and I joke pretentious. I I, I, know, I, I, I think know. this is more obviously. It's like it is more um, higher. Uh, again, I won't even put on cin- cinema because I think that because you don't understand a movie, oh, we lose, we lose. I don't think that's it. Uh, uh, Naf, I think we may have just lost it. Hey! There we go, he's yeah. back. I was actually trying to dip out quietly so I could like run to the bathroom without telling the universe oh, shit, I need to sorry. pee. Um, but <laughs> you guys called me out. Go. It's okay. It's fine. It is what it is. Go I'm going to dip out for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll talk about this just in the interim. Yep. Uh, but my, my feeling with it was that there are films, I, I, I tend to believe where it's like, you know, if, if you walk out of a director's movie and you didn't understand the film, yeah. I don't think that's just on you. I've always believed that. I think that, like, listen, I think there are times where people are conveying something that's beyond... And, and there's stuff that's more akin to modern art where it's, like, it's not really... I have a meaning behind it, but it's really almost like a mirror piece. Like, I'm just curious to see what you take away from this. Like, it's not... It doesn't have an inherent meaning. I. It's just a bunch of stuff that happens, and I just want to yeah. see what you think about it. Is, is this I specific... Yeah, is this specifically on like that scene or just the entire just thing? This is just it's more this is more like while Nav's gone, this is more just the concept of cinema in general. Yeah. I think it's more I think that a lot of people will go because it's on the Criterion collection, it's innately higher art right, than right, something right, right, entertaining. Right. And just by its very nature, which I think is a bad way to go about it, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think that it's like, okay, you're discounting this because someone understood it. But this could just be someone filming literally test footage on their camera and you'll call yeah. it brilliant. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's yeah. it's like I I think that that's a little bit of a complex uh Yeah, I don't know. Like, there's, there's yeah, there's yeah. always there's always sort of like just a, just a, an innate response to something, I think. And it's just just I think it's just a part of experiencing film for me is just just being just honest with myself it's like i'm even if i watch something that's going to be like highly critically acclaimed it's got it's like well how does it make how does it make me feel am i feeling nothing am i not getting it um and and and, and just putting that into my thoughts but yeah like if, but i think i think it's also like not so much uh not getting it but also whether like the film made me feel something and I, when i watched this film for the first time i didn't get it but I felt something, and that was what was important to me with this. Is Agreed. Like, and, and, and that's I, the I thing. It's like, I, I, I it made me feel. That's what, in my opinion, that's what art is about, yep. is that is more doesn't make you feel. If it makes yep. you feel something, it did its job. You yep. don't have to know why. You don't have all that goes. And uh, But then there is, um, uh, as Chase was saying in chat, there's also, I think modern filmmaking is very on the nose, and younger audiences it's, pick up it's on very context literal. less. Yeah. I, I wouldn't but I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far because I would also yeah. say look at stuff like Tar you look at stuff like oh Everything yeah yeah, yeah. I, th- I, I think mean, that's more look at the Batman I think if it's you more look at the like, ba- big big yeah, studio yeah. Like, I mean yeah, sure I agree stuff, yeah. but I also would then say the Batman like yeah, you know yeah, you exactly. could also argue Christopher Nolan's films even though I I think that he's a bad example to hold up as like a godsend. Yep. It's more to me, I think, that we want to look at Marvel and we want to look at these things as, yes. And I don't disagree, mm-hmm. but I, I I, just, I hate that critique of modern filmmaking when mm-hmm. people lump everybody in a box. Because mm. I go, everything yeah, no, everywhere no is one of the most yeah. brilliant films to be made. Not the last year, to be made. Mm-hmm. And it's like when I hear modern filmmaking being put in a standpoint of people don't listen to oh, context yeah, no. clues... I think it's more just studios have been not taking enough chances with mm. their audiences because I think audiences have proven they can handle it. There's always going to be the dumb fucks in the back. Yeah. yeah. And how you fix yeah, this boy. is you follow Nalbus, you follow On Second Thought, you follow Movie Man. We have great recommendations for you guys. Yeah. Um, I yeah. promise you, uh, we'll find you some 28 episodes. Stuff. You go back through the 28 episodes of One with the Films and you watch all of the films that we've introduced to each other and to you guys. Um, because in every single one of those episodes, somebody hadn't seen that film before. And it was wild. Um, cool. Yeah, but like the film... I, I want to talk a little bit about the visual effects for the film too, because naturally they have a yeah. very um, 
unique approach to how they use visual effects and editing. Um, oh, I guess yeah. the editing is an interesting one as well. I want to. You were talking about the sort of the, the kind of the pinhole uh, things that I, I hesitate to call them transitions, but like when it, when the film yep. wants you to focus on something, it very much tells yep. you. And what another yep. director might, in something that felt very realistic, do by um, you know like changing who they're focused on, like pulling focus onto somebody else. Um, this man this just goes. No fucks. I'm gonna black everything out, get rid of all the audio, and just point you at this person. There's a there's like, a cat as here. A filmmaker, Notice the cat. Can, <laughs> yeah. Like literally, it is one of those things where I almost admired the audacity of this film to go. I don't know. Zoom in on it. Like you know. <laughs> yep. Like just kind of going like I don't know. It's a map painting. Man, throw a guy in the background. If you want to show a flashback, it's we're gonna legit do a flashback. That flashback like, sequence, that, I forgot we're about that. Have it treated, yeah, the war flashback. We're gonna have it yeah. treated as if someone's showing old footage and people are actually commenting on, on yeah. it as if yeah, they're the watching the flashback. Oh look, she and looks I'm so like, much like you. Yeah, and, and then when they're talking to each other and it comes to black and it has the Oh, sorry, we cut out there for a second. Um but yeah, like when when they're talking to each other in the flashback and it's yep. uh, cutting to black and showing it like an old, you know, like, what do they call them? Before, before the talkies came out. It's like, it's just like an eight millimeter reel. Yeah. It's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Like what's your, what's your take on, especially the, the commentary that they have on it? Like what, like w- with it being sort of this like old historical war thing and sort of the way they're treating it and romanticizing it. Did, did you, did you have any sort of response to that I do. at all? Yeah, Let's hear I it. do. Uh, it's one of those things where this is where I get into, and I always feel self-conscious. This is where I'm like, I'm reading into it. It may not be is there, but at least deep? this is my interpretation. It's exactly. That deep. But I'm saying, but if you're asking me the question of do I think something's being said, I think it's really interesting that they're comparing the concept of like, oh, this guy dies at war, right? Dies yeah. at war, and it's kind of this woman who dies. This decides basically, I'm committed to this man. I will never take another. Mm-hmm. I will never have this happen. And it's like, I will basically die with this man. Mm-hmm. Essentially, yeah. that kind of thing of like, I will never long for another. I will never have that. Mm-hmm. And thus, mm-hmm. the spirit that carries over is basically mm-hmm. making that decision for other women as well. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's kind of the, the idea of being like, the whole thing is that they have to be virgins when they're in the house. Committed, like that kind of thing there. Like, that's where it's yeah. there. And it's basically by killing them, it's assuring that they're never going to have that. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. I think that that's a very interesting commentary. If we are going to go with, a, is it that deep, bro? I think that. Trust me. <laughs> Trust uh, me. It's that deep. Exactly. But like, <laughs> I, I think that it is that commentary on what older generations of women have done to modern ages of women. Like in the concept of at, at a time, that would have been seen as the legitimate approach. You married mm-hmm. this man. You've only taken one. That's it. That's all you can yeah. do. But in I, our I wanna, more modern ages, we have that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I want to zoom in on something as well, just real quick. Um, the when they actually arrive it, into the countryside, uh, when the bus pulls up, there's a sign, and I don't know if you guys got the actual text that showed up to, to translate the sign, but it said, um, "Return to the countryside, get married," and that's literally it. So the idea huh. of marriage and the idea of of like committing to someone for your entire life and and that sort of going to sort of like uh, like a metaphysical level is like definitely like deep seated in this film like you're like basically bang on to something there that that was what i was picking up on and the more you're talking about that it's like there has to be a reason and it's really interesting that they make the old widow the villain but it's not the villain in a male dominated movie yep. it's a it's the it's the villain in a female dominated movie yeah so it's like clearly it's not a it's not an anti-women film no you know it's I think very it's much i think it's i think it's sympathetic i think it's sympathetic i think it's for incredibly the if anything i think it's talking about like i mean if you were to go with the whole idea of there i think that the concept of jaws invading this film is more like the almost impending shit that women have to deal with mm-hmm I mean, you ask any of our friends, any of our previous guests, it's like the shit that they got to deal with is insane. And it's like it can kill any one of them at any any point for any reason it so chooses. And, you know, I think that that's a very interesting thing when it comes to this movie. And I don't know. I, I like 
talking about that that gives me a lot of respect for what i think if that is it, it, yep. the fact that i even came alone came came to Should that in discussion <laughs> with you guys i think is a kudos to the the film there are films naf and i talk about i think one of the things with a film that the worst thing a film can do mm-hmm. is have me walk mm-hmm. out of it and feel nothing yeah mm-hmm. i don't want to talk about it i don't want to was that the flash is that what you said about. the flash uh yeah, yeah, yeah. you see the flash weird i said flash right um and it was uh like um but like that was uh that's one of those things for to me i'm like i i don't i don't know i think that that's kind of the interesting thing is i just i i love movies that make me think whether that is a modern blockbuster and that does it for me or it's this which it's why I love having you on because I would never go willingly watch this, <laughs> but I'm so glad I did. Yeah, like in in, yeah. in the best of ways. Yeah, it's a film that sits with you as well. It's a film that you might not get while you're experiencing it, but then you sort of start to recollect things. And you think back, you're like, oh wait, this, this, and this. Well, can um, I ask, um, um, Jim? Yeah. That reminds me of another film I watched last year, which um, Kay hasn't seen yet, but I've been desperate to like talk to people about it. Did you watch After Sun? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, didn't, I, didn't, I finished my like my film catalog last year. I yeah. sort of, like, was like watching a lot of older stuff last year. Gotcha. Um, we can watch but, it. Um, we can watch it now because yeah. I, I need to see Sounds this good. film. Like, it just yeah. It's another one that like it kind of it didn't go how I expected based on what was happening in the film, but it wasn't until like turning off the film, sitting in the credits, just kind of sitting there, going like, wait. Oh, that like maybe an hour or two hours later, I just started crying on the couch. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I had a similar thing with Belfast. I had yeah. a sim- no drive drive my car in Belfast, but it happened during the movie. I'm gonna cry. Was so it? About oh, thing. That's so good. Drive my car is so good. That's what we're gonna do on the show as well because I haven't seen it yet. Me. So I'm waiting for uh, K to do it. But but yeah, drive my car is one of those that like I did not know why I was watching it for the first. I think two hours maybe like first hour hour and a half like it was good don't get me wrong but it was like what's this film trying to say and the same thing happened with belfast i I told naf i was like in my review i was like 30 minutes into belfast i first act didn't know what the fuck i was supposed to be expecting didn't know what what it was trying to say and then by the end of the movie i was like what isn't this film trying to say Mm -hmm. (laughs) like and I, I love films that do that, that, that it take, and this is why, you know, to the point chase that you made about modern films, it really is an impressive thing for a film to trust itself enough to be like, you may not get it. You may not get it up to this point. I'm, I'm sorry, but just, just bear with me here. Just bear with me and we'll get there. Like, and, and that takes guts. And that's like, you know, I think it takes these kind of first time directors and first time yep. filmmakers to be able to trust in things, to be able to say, I don't know if it's going to work, but let's see if it does. Yeah. Um, well, on, on that note as well, I mean, I don't know if you guys have any more points to make, but I like, I can jump into some, maybe some history leading up to this film, especially from, from, you know, Obayashi from. I am very curious sort of about his that. development about that. Yeah, I don't know if there's any other like Naf, Is there another scene you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think that the things will come the up house as they them. come up. I just um, like yeah, there yeah. were in particular um, like certain shots that I was just like, mm, I love that this is what you've done. Um, like particularly there was the shot where they throw the watermelon down the well and the camera's under the water and that was a very yeah. like better call yes. soul type in the bin with the tiny yep. camera, the yeah. Black Magic Pro Six K just shooting at the. <laughs> Um, but it yep. definitely wasn't 6K. Um, but uh, <laughs> Chase also asked, uh, just on our previous point, wasn't Flash supposed to kick off the DCU reboot? And it's, it to my wasn't. understanding, meant to end it so they can start again, as opposed to like being the first film in the new universe. Um, oh, it's for sure And it not kind of feels universe. like it, like it sort of closed the loop on it at the end and kind of is like oh okay so that's where he is we're not going to see him again without spoiling it um and he also said a film that tried something new um is refreshing comparatively to a large amount of movies coming out and yeah like that's huge and there were heaps of films like that over the last couple of years that do go unnoticed um and yeah like i mean one from last year that i really loved was pearl the prequel to x did you guys watch that 
No, I haven't seen those. You know, ones, I but did. I'm, I'm looking to it, yeah, because they look great. And and um, I think yeah. um, Ty Ty West, I think, did those, right? Yeah. Or and so I... he he filmed them basically back to back. Yeah, because Ty West was on the Criterion for House. Uh, there's a video of him talking about House. So see, ah. I didn't actually think about it until right in this moment, but like they do have a lot of similarities. Particularly Pearl is very okay. like. Um, again, it's it's shot I'm like a storybook. Star. Like it's, it's very, like storybook. Yeah, yeah. I, it's yeah. very bright and over the top, and then it goes into this Dark horrific territory. subject yeah. matter, and it just. I remember just watching and just being mesmerized the whole time. I was just like, "This is mm-hmm. the most beautiful, disgusting thing I've seen in my life." Yeah, I want to see. Uh, and I'm watch watch it. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> To it, you 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 won me over, and I was I was gonna be like, you know, now if I might watch that, you know, that sounds about good. Please, but then you I'm reminded me, asexual. Then you reminded me I'm asexual, and then I'm like, oh damn, maybe I won't. Actually, maybe X not. is the horny one. Pearl isn't that horny of a film. Okay, yeah, I'll watch Pearl. X is, X is X is the porn one. Yeah, I think it's literally they go hence, to a cabin to shoot a porno. Hell yeah, I, I, I saw the trailer. I know what it is. <laughs> awesome film. But, but anyway. To the point, one thing I did want to talk about before we go on to this, I didn't know if this is tied up in the history or not. No, 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 it's um, all good. And, like, if you want to bring up something, just go. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious about this, and then we can go into the history there. Yep. Because did y'all, this is a weird tangent, did y'all ever see that animated movie Monster House? Yep. Yep. N- no. I did. We're going to watch that for ch- for Ruin My Childhood. Okay. <laughs> but, um... Uh, on a scale from it's a new milk set. to wine, how did it age? Yeah, uh, it's the, that is how the, we're going to start a new segment of called "Ruin My Childhood," which is yep. if you on a scale of on a scale of wine to cheese, how well does this film age? Uh, and so, uh, on a standpoint of that's a really great way of phrasing that. Now, now we got to do that soon because I, I, I want to Yeah, we see were talking that. about that before you jumped on the stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were, we were so Jim gets some. Oh, all too. right. Yeah, uh, but that's great. I it's like, like yeah, that. Yeah, on a scale from milk to wine, this aged like cheese. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But my my favorite thing is that uh, in Monster House, again, the whole thing is like this thing trying to attack them, and I it reminded me in that ending of everything trying to get them, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, th- th- this this feels, and I loved Monster House as a kid. I was like, that is. That's a scary ass fucking movie. As a kid, I was like, "Damn, a whole house tried to kill you." Fuck, like you know. As I, a kid, I, I was like, "A damn joke." It. It's what I, I remember what? Um, them being like, "That must be the house's uvula," and it's like, "So it's a girl house. Everyone has a uvula, not me." That's <laughs> all I don't know from that movie. I don't have one. So. That is a good. That's a good line. <laughs> so it's a girl house. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, but let's let's dive into some of those um, points you got there, Jim. I'm really curious. Okay. How are you doing for time okay. as well? Let me have a look. We're one hour 13, so we're pretty good. Yeah, I think doing okay. some history and then kind of wrapping up with it, I think sounds good. Okay. Um, the history might bring some light to stuff as well, and I Amazing. do want to, like, after, after we um, do the history sure. as well, I, I do want to bring up some thematic stuff we haven't really discussed yet that, like, will probably come out of this as well. Don't. Naturally. Um, so, okay. So... Obayashi was born on January 9th, 1938, in the beautiful seaside town of Onomichi. Um, he was pra- uh, raised primarily by his maternal grandparents. His his dad was a doctor, and he went off to World War II. Um, and so Obayashi, from a young age, he was exploring like many of the arts, uh, drawing, writing, piano. There we go, the famous piano. I'm surprised we didn't mention the piano scene. Yeah, we didn't talk about that Yeah. Too <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, to get I mean, in by a piano. What a hell of a way to go out. Hell yeah. That one was um, that's the on fear the... any piano player has. It's just well, having that shoved on their hands. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and I love fallen? she yeah. goes up and it's the fingers are gone. And then she's like, oh my God. Puts she's laughing hand about down, it. And then the hand's gone. I'm like, oh. But, yeah. yeah um, it's funny because she's, she's like laughing about her fingers being yeah. gone. She's like, oh, that's fine. And then her hand comes off. She's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing I was thinking of on that was, um, oh yeah, so with the score, like obviously the music is really cool in this film, yeah, but particularly that go, piano yeah. motif that plays, like the mm-hmm. first half of that sequence that repeats sounds is, like, like yep. identical to the opening of Up. Black Parade. Oh no, wait, what? <laughs> I, I, oh, wait. I heard Black Parade as well when Melody is actually Parade. playing okay, cool. it, but like the piano uh, motif that plays throughout the film 
um, the first yeah. section of that, I was just like, oh, we're going into up right now. Is that what's happening? Um, so I, I don't know. Okay, yeah, I can, I can, I can do it. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah the, the um, the first bit of that like piano sequence, it sounds exactly like Black Parade. Oh like, yeah, it does. Yeah, when she goes over, she's like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Like, oh, all no. the same notes. <laughs> um, Drop cool. that needle. <laughs> Could you just imagine in house? Yeah, it just it's like kung fu. Please don't just... lose. When I was a young boy. They're beautiful Wait, was a young girl Mar- marley okay hold on hold on i know we gotta <laughs> yeah. get into the history here okay so do you want me to keep going dan Please. Harmon wrote oh, yeah. monster house oh who who's who's that again community Rick and Morty, community community wow Rick okay and Morty, shit. like like wrote that's monster funny. house that's pretty that's wild funny fuck <laughs> this is the shit you only get on our podcast this is... Maybe it did age like wine. Who knows? <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, continue. Um, Obiashi was into film uh, from a very young age. He shot his first eight millimeter short film at the age of six. Wow. Um, yeah, so he's been sort of like in this for a while. Um, so uh, now Obiashi's age seven in the year 1945. Uh, it's the year America dropped two atomic bombs on Japan's mainland: one in Nagasaki and one in Hiroshima. Do yeah, uh, and Hiroshima is the prefecture in which Obayashi's hometown of Onimichi resides. Um, God damn. So, basically at age seven, Obayashi's entire childhood was vaporized in an instant. So, he talks about this a lot, um, that he lost pretty much all of his childhood friends. Um, and a lot of his oh my God. childhood memories that he'd experienced was just sort of, just completely dissipated by the nuclear bomb. Um and I guess, like, to, to zoom in on something a little bit earlier... Have we ever which... thought that maybe America is the bad guys at times? Have we yeah, ever maybe. The that, exclusive maybe? thought. Every day. Every day. Um, no, but I, yeah, I th- don't think it's crossed everybody's mind. I, I think that we've done some good things. Is this fucking play about us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait>. Anyway, <laughs> continue. So, uh, j- just to zoom in on something a little bit earlier as well about that war flashback, did you guys sort of pick up on what the comment was one of the girls makes uh, when they see those nuclear bomb blasts go off? I don't quite uh, recall it. No. No, so. But I remember I that comment it, was made. I think Max says it looks like cotton candy. So, there is sort of like this dissonance that these girls in the story have with the events of the nuclear blast. Mm. Oh, and wow. For that being for that being in a film by someone who experienced it firsthand is sort of it's like, purposeful uh, it's very intentional um but to jump to jump forward quite a bit into obayashi's early career um so he took his interest to film to the next level creating uh many short films and experimental films um and he eventually landed a gig as a television com- uh, in the television commercial industry um so he's making like thousands of commercials i think in his whole life he made two thousand commercials or so um uh, his peers, like his other filmmaking peers, kind of looked down on him, um, sort of telling him, you know, you, you sold out. Um, and I think Obayashi's perspective on this and the way he sort of responded to it in sort of uh, retrospect, he's he's always been on, on, on the idea that, like, every single like commercial he sort of took under was uh, like, a, like an art project in its own, and he sort of took um, a lot of those comments to heart because to him it was very, like, much... He was still putting in the work to create the stuff and these people were sort of pushing down on him um you can see that that um yeah like that's been something that even with more modern filmmakers like a lot of people do get their start they're like the daniel started in commercials and music videos edgar wright same deal as well yeah um like yeah it's it's wild and even some people now that they're i know that there's a certain point after like for example ryan johnson was uh established he yep. went back and did like a music video for somebody else as well and like yep. edgar wright's gone and done that again for the sparks i think Scors- i think Mills. scorsese did a um is it scorsese did a music video taika well, also scorsese did that just ad did a for uh, belvedere vodka okay. yeah yeah um yeah no it's, it's it's definitely a thing but yeah his peers looked down on him basically was just like you sold out um, but obviously, did try his hand at um, pitching feature films. Um, he pitched one called uh, Hanagatami, which is about a group of young teens living in a seaside town set against the backdrop of a looming threat of World War II. Um, 
which effectively that was essentially sort of meant to be like a semi autobiographical film, mm. um, sort sure. of about his childhood and that experience with that. Um, but the script was rejected um, because Japan audiences were sort of like losing interest in sort of like war films and 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 people were just losing interest in going to the cinemas in general at this point. Um, basically, uh, there was like a, a lower draw to movie theaters because of the um, home television um, was sort of like like really popular in Japan at the time, so people weren't really going to the cinemas because they could just see everything at home. So during the late 60s and 70s, there was sort of this era of like the Japanese exploitation um, genre. Uh, I don't know if you've seen anything from like that era at all. Um, mm. Like, no, nah. no, nah. nah. So yeah, um, basically that was on a future one with the films, but yeah, Hey, there we go. We can jump onto one of those. Um, Absolutely. So, so, um, what was surprising though is um, when, and this is the, the Jaws connection here, um, Jaws had a very sort of successful run in Japan, which was sort of like a surprise to everyone. People weren't going to the cinemas normally, but Jaws drew in mass audiences. So Toho's uh, response to this, which is the, the, the company that sort of distributed this film, um, Toho reached out to Obayashi uh, in the interest of writing a commercially viable horror film that would draw in a large demographic. So sort of the idea was just to bring in sort of all audiences because somehow it must it worked for Jaws. It's not working for anything else. So something about this is working and sort of bringing someone from the, the world of TV where, where everyone's eyes are right now and bring him on board to sort of bring people back to the cinemas was sort mm-hmm. of the, 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 the goal for this film. Um so um, during the writing process uh, of the film, Obayashi turned to his 11-year-old daughter to help co-write the film, asking her about oh. what scared her the most and what she saw in her nightmares. And I think now, before we actually did the show, we were talking about Shark Boy and Lava Girl and that connection there. So that's that's sort of what I was pointing out there. Yeah, with, with like that sort of stuff there. And that's something um, that if you go yeah. even like newer, you've got. Uh, Taika Waititi doing with um, what was it called? To Love and Thunder, where they got the kids to draw the demons, and then the VFX artist brought them to life. Um, oh, did, did was that like kids were involved? In that? Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so That's all, cool. uh, what was it? Chris Hemsworth kids, Taika's kids, and some of the other actors. They just he just said, "Hey, draw me the scariest monster you can," and they did, and then oh, they gave cool. it to the VFX artists, and they were like, "Make these the monsters that scare the kids in the film," because all the kids that were in the film were like, um, yeah, his kids and um, and yeah. Chris Hemsworth's kids and all those people. So like, yeah. Damn, that's the most um. interesting part of that film. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only part I'll actually like then. Yeah. Um, so, um, Obayashi is like... You don't like screaming saying, goats, man? You don't like screaming no, actually, goats, you know what? Not... Freaking hell. I love me a screaming goat. Oh, my Lord. Um, <laughs> damn. Um, so, uh, Obayashi has like, spoken about um, just, like seeking his daughter to um, sort of help him write the project. Um, believing adults uh, only think of things they understand. Children can come up with things that can't be explained, and so like sort of that sort of boy leans into the lava girl. girl. Yeah, so that sort shark of like leans into boy. the idea of this. That lava movie girl. made perfect sense as a kid. That movie, I remember watching Shark Boy and Lava Girl, going like, "That's reality." Mister yeah. Electric, have him sent to the principal's office and expelled immediately. What do you think if you watched if you showed a kid house would they have that same reaction to this? It's like, yeah, this is just this is just every night for me, Probably. baby. Probably. <laughs> this it is just every sense. single thing that I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Sit down with my um, four-year-old nephew and be like, "Can you explain a house to me?" And he's like, "Well, what it's got to do is it's important yeah, uh, so talking yeah. about virginity yeah. and marriage and committing to one person well, for the whole really, life." Well, it's really interesting. It actually had a huge thing to say about the bombs over, like. <laughs> yeah. Just, they look like yeah. cotton candy. Right. Um. Mm. So the fears that um, Obayashi's daughter, uh, I think her name was Chigumi, yeah, Chigumi, um, would become the death scenes of the film. So she had a fear of um, a pile of futons falling on her, like monsters attacking her, um, being washed by her own reflection. So in that scene with Gorgeous where she sees the reflection and looks back at her, um, uh, a large loud clock uh at a grandparent's house and getting her fingers caught in between the piano keys which there you go um and there's a specific story about that is that um chikumi apparently told um his uh, her, her father that um uh when she brought her tutor over to teach her piano if she got the keys wrong they would they would slap her fingers so that's where that fear sort of came from it's like she she would say it's like the piano keys are biting my fingers so that's what sort of 
inspired that specific sequence Damn. in the film. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so where are we, where are we at now? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so Obayashi returned to Toho with his pitch um, for the script for the film and House was greenlit within hours, which was sort of like an unheard of thing. Usually there's mm. sort of like a bit of time between that, but they were like, yep, cool, we're doing the film. Um, the only thing with that is that, as I said earlier, um, Toho only allowed their in-house directors to develop their projects. Um, so Obayashi wasn't under their contract. So they basically were like, you're not going to direct this film. We're going to get someone else unless you're going to be on contract. And I think it was because he was a commercial TV commercial guy. He couldn't be under contract with them. So basically they were just trying to find a director for this. And that's that two year gap. Basically they were jumping to a bunch of other directors to say, Hey, do you want to direct this script? And they would hand them a script and they'd be like, I had no. <laughs> what is yeah. this? Yeah. So I think it was sort of a case of like, the fuck. Yeah, this make this clearly makes no sense to me, and is yeah. like clearly someone else's pageant project. I would rather not do this. Um, and as I said, yeah, uh, Obiashi would spend the next two years developing that radio drama, the manga, uh, and handing out flyers for House, uh, which caused the public awareness for the film to sort of um, build. People were actually interested in the film. So after that, and a lack of success of actually getting a director, uh, Toho eventually caved and gave the film to Obayashi. So he did end up actually directing it, as we know. Um, supposedly in the production, it ran pretty smoothly. Um, the, as, as I said, there was the, the models that sort of worked, uh, were the actors mm. in the film. Uh, it was shot in Toho's largest studio. Um, and they played the soundtrack. Yeah, I've already said all these things. <laughs> Uh, and then we mentioned also the post-production as well. Um, Obayashi edited the entire film himself um, and he did the special effects himself. And a lot of the time, usually he'd be shooting the scene, not really having a plan as to how he was going to actually approach the effects uh, until he got into the post-production bay, which is all obviously non-linear, like no software editing. It was all purely just yeah. scratching stuff onto film and creating sure. like, paintings and stuff which was kind of insane. Which, if you want uh, to get a good visual on what that looks like, um, Spielberg's most recent film, that was really interesting yeah. to me. I can't remember, what was it called? Oh, again? The Fablemans. The, the Fablemans, Fablemans, yeah. I was going to call yeah. it The Spielbergs, and then I was like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, but mean, yeah, The Fablemans, that was really cool. Yeah, I mean... That, and then the other one that kind of dives into that a little bit is if you've seen Werewolf by Night, um, there's yeah. a um, behind-the-scenes that's made by Michael Giacchino's brother, who's a documentary director and so when they brought mm. Giacchino on to do Werewolf by Why Night they brought his brother on to film a documentary about Giacchino's first feature you know what I mean okay. and he talks wow. about that same thing how he, they would make Super 8 films and they would take it out and they would scratch it to make lasers and things like that and I was like that yep. is so cool and that's purely oh, yeah. this film yeah yeah, and it has that like I guess like that childlike feel to it. Like that's what you'd expect a young sort of yeah like, again like Spielberg to do. But now Obayashi is in like his mid thirties doing it in this crazy like child fantasy film. Um, so uh, yeah, as as we said like earlier, it was released in nineteen seventy seven. Um, and the film was met by a pushback by the industry, calling it a stain on Japanese cinema, uh, <laughs> which is kind of uh, it's kind of crazy. Uh, especially considering, because like I've seen, like I've I've looked through the catalog of films that came out in the seventies, and I've seen some like incredible films um, from Japanese exploitation film, but there's like a lot of like garbage in there because it's all just like mass-produced sexploitation and like uh, like Chanbora samurai films and stuff like that, and it, a lot yeah. of them are just kind of like garbage. So it's interesting they reacted to, to this film in that way. I was going to say the people know, who brought you tentacle porn concerned yeah. by this being a stain on the yeah. industry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. like it's like okay. Uh, it's it's one of those okay, okay. Let's calm down. Um, so the film had a successful uh, box office run, as we said earlier. Um, and the film was uh, not released in the um in the West until two thousand and nine with uh, Criterion and the Eureka's Masters of Cinema. Um, the film would eventually develop a huge cult following, uh, f sorry, cult following in the West uh, over the next decade, and would be reclaimed as a critically beloved piece of cinema history. Um, in Obayashi's full career, he directed around forty films, uh, over two thousand TV commercials. Uh, in twenty sixteen, Obayashi was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, with expected few months to live. Um, Obayashi went on to direct not not one but two more films. Uh, in 2017, he released 
Hanagatami, which was the first film he actually pitched to Four House. He actually uh, got a chance to finally make that, that was that film. war film that you were talking about. Th- that was the autobiographical mm. film, sort of about his. Oh, that, wow. um, I'd be very interested in watching that at some point. Yeah, I've have I've seen that one. It's 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 like three hours long, and it's uh, in post like nineties Obayashi. You sort of get this. Um, he sort of seems like he's um, sort of vindicated by uh, modern editing software because you know how he would just you have to scratch film and stuff like that. Now, when he, when you open the Pandora's box as to what you could do with software, uh, Obayashi just went completely nuts. So, like uh, modern Obayashi is like an entirely different beast. Like wow. you watch Hangatami and his other film, his last film, Labyrinth of Cinema. Um, they are just insane like just just it's just a constant throwing shit at your face uh they're sort of like half got a documentary element to them as well they tell you facts about like japanese history cinema history with like these little anecdotes that pop up on the screen but it's still narrative and it's constantly changing style labyrinth of cinema is about i think it's like uh it's it's three guys who who uh, get transported into a cinema screen uh because they're trying to find this girl uh and they basically just traverse through different genres and it's it's insane that sounds um, awesome I, yeah yeah um they're definitely films that i would usually recommend you watch sort of maybe after you've seen a couple of his films before um because they sure. very are the closes to his career and they have like this emotional weight to them where you sort of feel like this is like a farewell like he was making mm. it like terminally ill uh, which is also insane like the the amount of sort of energy they have uh, and he's like very very sick while he's making them um, and yeah they just feel very very personal um, and great send offs uh, and he eventually passed away on the 10th of April uh, in 2020 so he's he's been three years away from us um, wow. but yeah that's Obayashi's life um, Dude. and there are a couple things I guess I want to zoom in on but is there any sort of I guess especially the war stuff as well is there any new maybe takeaways you might have on the film that from knowing a bit more about him and where he's come from, especially TV commercials and, and of the like. Yeah, well, a lot of particularly how kind of he presents us with the visual effects side of things, that yep. what may be argued is like when we talk about, you know, positives and negatives, some people might be like the visual effects are kind of like mm, funky. But like <laughs> the vibe is that of like knowing how to work with like a lower budget um, and trying yeah. to do as oh. much as possible with that lower budget. Um, yeah. So well, like, I mean, I mean, hell, it reminded me of like this is the kind of shit that you would see a modern person try and do now with like VFX or like green screen and stuff like that. And it's like, again, keep in mind time period. It's yeah. like I would be, I'd be like, okay, nowadays. But I'm like, that was '77, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> I mean, fuck, yeah. this like actually was like no joke. I'm like, yeah, it comes off cheesy now, but these were actually pretty decent effects for the I time. Was, this was remarkable. I think. I think it's, a, it's like absolutely like mind. He was single handedly trying to do kind of what Lucas did, did with Star Wars, but he was trying to single handedly do it with these kind of effects this way. Yeah. Obviously, like, I, like you know apples to oranges but still it's like a, a very similar intent well i think um obayashi kind of was a pioneer of blue screen technology as well i don't think it was sort of a, a thing that people used a lot obviously they used it in star wars but here he uses blue screen for like basically everything like yeah. you see like yeah sort of the, the, the blue outlines of everything and he sort of is just i could like, certainly see it yeah it and almost gave the vibe but, of like when they had the hands that were decapitated in my mind i was like yep they've just painted her fingers blue yep. and then Yep, yep. And then even um, with the head that comes out, I'm like, she's in a blue morph suit. And she's just yeah. chasing... And I think about on set that day, her just chasing the other girl and biting her on the ass. <laughs> just like... Yep. Yeah, yeah, because she's just completely blue. Yeah. Um, actually, to, to point out one as well, uh, the death scene that uh, Professor has where she gets dissolved in the um, in the, the cat blood, Yeah. Um, that is done by... I think she was suspended, and they basically just poured blue paint on her. And they just keep that out. Sick. That's that's how they did that effect. Yeah, that's all awesome. fascinating. Um, there's a lot of just like wild stuff they were just doing with blue paint and blue screen and stuff. Um, it's absolutely insane. I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like it feels like horror movie kind of vibes. Like I just have to figure it out. Let's just we'll just figure it out. Um, and I think yeah. horror movies these days are obviously quite different because of the amount of technology and software that we have available to us, but. Um, like you were saying, obviously he's. This is in the age of uh, manual editing, 
Um, yeah. Which is, yeah. yeah, it's mental. Yeah. Um, so I guess I kind of want to bring some light maybe to some of my maybe personal readings on the film. And, yeah. I, and I hope this doesn't sort of, <laughs> like, I, it's sort of hard for me. To, I've never sort of verbalized this because I've sort of been just like, just sort of churning yeah. in Ruminating. my head to what yeah. the film Well, is. tell me, tell me. Okay. Well, me so, too. Don't um, just tell him. I want to know as well. No, no, okay, tell me. Yeah, no, 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 me, no, me, no, me, uh, um, uh, okay, uh, fine. Yeah, just, just I'm get kidding. down there. There you go. <laughs> just mute yourself. Um, just like leave second. and then go watch it on YouTube and then come back and be like, I heard it. Exactly. Well, you give us another view. So the the first thing, and, and these are a couple of like theories that sort of like sort of pull together a little bit and they sort of flow. Um, so sure. The first thing, and the, and the thing I've sort of mentioned a couple of times is, is the idea of the uncanny. Uh, and this was a like a study from Sigmund Freud's, I think, in nineteen twelve. It was, uh, I think, a, something he released, which was uh, Das Heimlich, um, which Heimlich, uh, so unheimlich means uh, not of the home or uh, or unhomelike or the unfamiliar. And I think we've always already sort of discussed the idea of like this film feels familiar but off. And mm. it's the same thing with you mentioned, which I didn't actually think about, which is don't hug me, I'm scared. Which is like it seems innocent and familiar. It's like oh, it's like Sesame Street, but then it sort of turns into this point where you reach that point of the uncanniness, where it's like, but something feels off. And I think that's what this entire film is sort of taking advantage of is that idea of the uncanny and the fact that like the literal German word unheimlich literally is just translated to un like unhomelike or unlike the home. Sort of to me is like this. That seems a bit too good to be true. That like the yeah. film is called House, and it's sort of connected to that, and like that's something that I've sort of gathered there. Um, and Freud sort of talks about the idea of the detached limbs and how that sort of sends the idea of um, the uncanny into our into our mind. It's sort of the best way to think about it. And you sort of like imagine you you wake up one day and you see your arm detached from your body next to you, like that sort of visceral feeling of that's my arm but it's not it's no longer attached to me i'm familiar with that but now it's an object that is separate from me um and that's sort of that idea and that is just present throughout like the entire mm. film like detached limbs and and people being sort of separated yeah. from themselves yeah uh and and sort of separated from their sense of identity and there, there is a whole bunch of stuff I have like on like identity. I mean, I can I can jump forward into that as well. But like, we sort of have these girls that sort of are able to sort of identify themselves through their name. They have like attributes that they help them identify themselves. And then we have the auntie who is sort of almost like this. She's from a generation that is sort of unable to sort of identify herself. She's sort of stuck in the house. She's a housewife, and as we've sort of discussed as well, she's like basically just waiting for the husband to come back home. So she sort of lost her sense of self uh, and just become one with the house, and sort of not one with the films, one with the films and one with the house. Oh my god, shit! That's what we should call the episode. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, one with the so, house. Yeah, so, and so sort of that like what good. what the girls are confronted with is. Um, they sort of their deaths are them becoming one with the house as well, mm -hmm. and we've talked about the idea of like marriage and stuff, which is like I'm glad you like mentioned that as well. Is the idea mm -hmm. of like they lose their sense of self um, when they become that housewife figure. Um, yeah. They lose their they, their identity is stripped, and in their deaths, they like literally face their own identity in a way. Uh, it's like a, like an ego death, uh, like a complete loss of like subjective self identity. Yeah. So it's like Melody is eaten by the piano, Sweet, who's like soft and kind, is like crushed by like soft pillows and futons, um, and you have Gorgeous, who is um, killed by her own reflection. Um, there's there's all this sort of stuff about like facing yourself and your identity detached from yourself, and that again is like leading into the uncanny as well. So oh yeah all this stuff of like the auntie resenting the girls uh sort of individualism and that sort of generational divide that's going on yeah there, which can be also attributed to the sort of idea of like it being a metaphor for the horrors of nuclear warfare which is like the aunties from a generation that that faced the, the reality of war like firsthand much like obayashi did and then we have these girls come in who are sort of dissonant to that experience mm -hmm. and sort of are just very sort of like 
happy go lucky like hey things look great yeah we're we at the love, house we love, yeah we love just hanging out um yeah. and they're sort of met with the reality of that through like sort of like these childlike image this childlike imagery yeah um I don't know. There, there's a bunch it's, of stuff going on there. That, it's like, really I, I interesting. Feel like I'm that, <laughs> no, you're you're good. It's it's really really interesting stuff, no, it's, and it's really, it goes it, to show it, that it truly over is. yeah, it goes to show that over like fifteen watches, <laughs> clearly yeah, more I'm, and more <laughs> becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. Um, and similar, like we've talked about this a lot of the time, uh, Keegan. Like when you rewatch the Last Jedi multiple times and you get more yeah, out of it. Of course. Um, well, the guys, this has been one with the films, and uh, <laughs> but. Your um your analysis and insight of the film is like it's spectacular. Like it's it's really, really insightful. And as you say these things, like I'm like, yeah, that is making a lot of sense, particularly around like their yeah. deaths and connecting that yes. to kind of like the, the ego death kind of vibe. Ident- identity and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. And like there's like yeah, there's the uncanny again, the separation from self, the evisceration of self that sort of like generational divide yeah. and i also had i also had the idea of um um and it kind of connects to the uncanny thing is um the, the especially the character of fantasy how as i think i mentioned earlier that she's able to perceive the unreal events that are happening yep. she's the only one that's reacting to stuff and being like this is like the moment she gets to the house there's the point where she picks up the camera and she's like looking through it and she sees that weird bird thing that goes across yeah. the camera. I don't know what yeah. it is but she but she sees it and no one else and she's like oh my god like what is that she points it out no one else reacts mm. um, and then when she enters the house she takes the camera to take a photo of the the auntie and all the girls together and then the camera gets destroyed basically yeah. sort of her viewpoint into seeing the unreal is sort of taken away from her um, and so I think it's like her perspective and her imagination uh, allows her to sort of process the horrors that are happening and the, the other girls just aren't able to perceive that yeah um and the That's way i've read that as well knowing about like uh, how obiashi and his daughter wrote this together i sort of see fantasy's character as a surrogate for both obiashi and Chigumi because she like perceives the events like as like imaginative childhood dreams um and but she's she witnesses it as like unimaginable horrors like obayashi had in his childhood yeah of just his basically everyone he knew just being uh, just destroyed instantly which is what she witnesses she sees all their friends just die like obayashi yeah also saw well not saw but like he experienced yeah having yeah. everyone he knew just vanish and disappear and it's this unexplainable unimaginable event and in a way i think like obayashi's comparing the the innocence of these the, the horrors that his daughter like feel, like thinks about to the horrors that he had as, mm. as a kid in yeah. a way. The well, it's like I hers it's are almost reality. a little bit more innocent because it's not a yeah. bomb was dropped on me. They're like almost perceived from the adult to be well, it's, yeah, it's kind just of ridiculous. It's kind like, of why are you scared about that? Yeah. Oh exactly. Well it's it's like even the um what I found to be very interesting is it's kind of the concept of what truly terrifies me about like cryptids or unsolved mysteries Mm -hmm. is it's one thing as a kid when let's be frank your realm of life experiences is slim to none and then you get older and most of the time you're uh, like people will basically be like oh you know the thing you had a question about well this is why yeah. yeah. Like, you know, most people tend to be like, oh, even if it's scientific, explain, like, you know, whatever, like societal, mm-hmm. like there's a reason for everything. And then there's a point that some people never get to because they don't go down this line of thought. Mm-hmm. But then there's that time where you'll hear something and somebody will go, like, you'll hear these like scary stories where like, like uh, about this event. And you go, well, why did they do that? Why did they just all of a sudden yeah. disappear? Like, there's got to be a reason for it. And they're like, yeah, we still don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's and it's like, and that's scary. What? Yeah. It's like, it, it's, it's, like, it's in, in not having it explained, it becomes scarier. It, it's, it's that, I feel like as you're talking about, like, I think it's the combination of the two fears. It's understanding the root of that, of like, as a child, that very base, I don't have to know shit about the world to know this is terrifying. Yeah. And then it's combining that with the realistic thing of the moment of him feeling like in an instant, 
Yeah. I like everything I knew and love was vapor. I, I I lost yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's they're, on... they're both sort of incomprehensible fears. Yeah, as well. So and I think that you're it. right in kind of the overall, um, like thing that I kind of take away from that is that yeah, like the film is very much uh, trying to dive into those like yeah ethereal fears that you just kind of have by existing. But um, yeah, you can't explain it. Yeah, and I mean, we could absolutely go on and talk about this for another couple of hours as well. But I know it's also <laughs> getting uh, late up Keegan's way in our days to start. Mm, mm, um, mm, so we definitely look to wrap up a little bit. But I wanted to ask um, both of you. Um, okay. just before we move on to the next part and just talk a little bit about what we've been watching and then announce next week's guests. Um, do we have any final thoughts on the film? Um, well, I'll, obviously, I'll, Jim, you've thought about this film quite a bit, so I'm curious to hear yours. Um, I mean, what I just rambled to you guys is what I've been sort of thinking about over the past, like, couple months or so yeah i'm actually i'm working to create like a video essay basically that was gonna be on my next question i was gonna go surely you have this in like an hour long video essay that's why that's all all that stuff is just in my head and yeah i I really appreciate you guys having me on so i could actually verbalize it and yeah and and our guests get to get a uh, a taste of that too and go all right so guys make sure that you follow and subscribe to um now as well so you can see that video when it drops yeah, and Absolutely. So hopefully I can explain it in, in ways that makes But you've like, already got sense. it set up so, um, like, it's very it's very clear. It doesn't come across convoluted or anything like that. So any other work that you do to, like, yeah. tidy it up is going to, yeah, it's, it, it's going to come out really good, man. I Absolutely. Feel that. Yeah, like, like, your thesis is strong. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate and, it. And it makes sense. The way you connect it back to his history and what we see, and especially yeah. those parts that come out about, like, his daughter, and particularly talking about her fears versus his fears, like, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot there. There's, um, there's stuff there. There's that generational divide. Yeah, that's yeah. There, that you I can call the video. There. It is that deep, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'll do it. But I gave the I'll film five stars on Letterboxd. I was like, I, I'm not quite sure why yet, but this feels right. Um, <laughs> that's how I felt when I first watched it. <laughs> I yeah. Like, I, and I I'm intrigued I to, to see how that changes over the next 14 watches as I catch up to you. Um, Because it definitely is something that I want to watch again and also, like, sit and watch other people watch and have them have that face that I have. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my favourite experience with this is I show this film to, like, people all the time and I'm, like, I'm the obsessive fan. I mean, you've seen that I have the Blu-ray. Yeah. And I have the I have the VHS tape as well that's sitting nice and snug in there as well. Um, I, what else do I have? God. Uh, I have You've got the, a house, sound- actually. You're in a house right now. I've got the soundtrack on oh, vinyl. that is very yeah. cool. That's very, very trippy cool. art as well. This is this is my this is my thoughts on the film is that I'm like weirdly obsessed with it and it's crazy and I love it. That is very cool. Um, <laughs> um, what about um, you, Kay? Any final thoughts? Yep. I mean, yeah, like I, I think as we talked about, I think this film is a great example of the creativity of this medium. Mm-hmm. I think that it's a thing of like applying and then also again when you really do look a little bit deeper, where it's like the film on the surface without knowing any of that is a very That's intriguing thing. film. Yeah. knowing more helps explain why certain choices were made yeah. or li- lends credence to intention. that felt deeper. Yeah, And I, I would say that it, it kind of goes to show you at least what we try to do with this podcast and the whole idea behind it is trying to show you the film is the film. And if you dive deeper into it, it just shows a different level of understanding and a different yeah. level of love and care that I think is... I think it's a beautiful thing. Mm. And I think getting a chance to experience that with you guys and to be able to learn again and continue talking about films that people are clearly passionate about, there's just nothing better. Yeah. So I recommend everybody go and take, check out this film at the very least because then yeah, it's just, I'm very curious to hear what people hear about it. And just like, again, if they feel the same way, bottom line is you at least can see something that's very, very original. Very yeah. So my, my two cents is I agree with you, Neff. I think it's five stars because I just don't know what else to give it. Yeah. Um. I, and it's I'm like I'm like this is one of those films I'm like this is either five stars or one and I don't know why <laughs> there's no in between yeah um yeah and we, we obviously we could dive uh deep into sort of uh what, what else we've been kind of watching this week as well but I don't want us to be taking up too much more time um but for me um I had a goal to try and watch a hundred films before my birthday which was on June 14th Ooh. I saw 96 happy birthday um <laughs> So I got very close, but I'm not unhappy about that because last year I watched 89 films and this year so far I've watched 96, 97 with this now. So um, if we get 200 by the end of the year, the goal is going to be to expand into genre month to month. So I want to do a month where I do like Akira Kurosawa's films and I want to go through the Ghibli films and I want to go through Hitchcock films. Actually, 
Yeah. So, I was going to say, have you, have you guys seen Akira Kurosawa? Because like, no. you guys are big Star Wars uh, guys. Yeah, so I, I took a bunch on I've my seen, hard drive. I've seen a couple. Um, yeah, I took a bunch on my hard drive uh, to LA when I visited um, K to, so that we could watch him, but we got caught up watching other stuff. Um, yeah. Like The oh Last Jedi. Three Namely times. Last Jedi. Yeah, it was necessary. Yeah. But yeah, so there's heaps of stuff that I want to come back to and, and catch up with. And this week... Um, Obviously, I watched House. I posted my, my four most recent watches on um uh, from Letterbox on Twitter. So if you guys follow me on Twitter, yep. self plug, you can find me there. And you can obviously, if you want yep. to see the hundred films that I watched this year, you can find it on my Letterbox, which is also on Second Thought. Um, but yeah, this week we watched uh, House. We watched um, the Flash, which is fine. It's fine. It's it just yeah, it's fine. Um, and uh, I saw The Woman King for the first time, which I missed in theaters. I haven't, and I haven't seen it. That film was like, so I remember when Black Panther came out, and I was like, that, mm-hmm. like, it was cool, like it's it's fine, I guess. Yep. Um, but there were very like MCU ness about it that mm-hmm. takes away from how good that film can really be. Like yeah. again, yeah. First, first two acts really solid. Last act, I'm kind of like, you've lost me now. Like, there's rhinos with armor. Woman King is like the epitome of everything I wanted Black Panther to be, and it has some okay. of the coolest choreographed action sequences. Um, and what it does also is it like sticks to its guns too. So rather than that sort of yeah MCU choppy cut 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 cut, you've got a few. It's closer to like a John Wick style of action, not exactly like that. You've still got you know quite a bit of movement, a bit of editing that's happening there to kind of crank it up. But for the most part, you can tell the choreography is really good because they just let you sit with it. They set the camera up and you just yeah. watch this beautiful choreography play out and the story is bad ass too. It is fucking awesome. Cool. I gave it four I stars. It um, and then um, I also got to um, guest host The Real Lovers which you can see on their YouTube page or on ours and it's on theirs and our um, Spotify and podcast platforms too. Where we talked about they're working through the 250 top letterboxed films um, and we did Coco together um, which was awesome. Beautiful. So we got to talk about that for a couple of hours and Coco is... My heart and soul. It's my it's a I am Miguel. It's a crier. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I've been watching recently. What about you guys? Uh, who wants to go first? Ah, <laughs> uh, Jim, go ahead. Okay. Um, I recently uh, watched through all of the um, the On Genesis Evangelion anime. I saw plus that on the Twitter. end of Evangelion film. Yeah. Hmm? What's that? I, I saw that across his social medias. Yeah, yeah. Um, re- really into that. It's really strange, really bizarre. Um, and yet, it also sort of has like sort of Freudian identity mm. like stuff going on. As I've well. heard it's, it's really, deep. really. Yeah, it's crazy. Saw the Flash. Uh, kind of a little bit. Uh, I don't know. A little bit donkey dick. I don't, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> a little bit donkey dick. Um, I saw um Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. We mentioned I think mm. before the show actually. Um, which uh, I thought was cool. But I didn't like come out of it like, yeah, that was the best fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I was just like, yeah, that was cool, and I yeah. liked it. So, anyway, um, oh, I watched. Okay, um, yeah. Oh, we mentioned Luke earlier. Uh, Luke likes games. Uh, I was at his place last week, uh, and we watched uh, MVP Two: Most Vertical Primate. It's I about a, uh, a chimpanzee that skateboards. <laughs> um, I saw your both your reviews of that on Letterbox. I was like, that is okay. Yeah, yeah that's a night. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's it's the second one in the series. I still need to watch the first one. I'm very curious. second one um, in the series. Yeah, there's three of them. There's uh, there's uh, most extreme fuck as well. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and I also um got this recently, which is uh some Obayashi films. It's the um, uh, third window films. Nobuhi got Obayashi eighties ka- uh, Katakawa years. I'd seen these films before, uh, but like this is a set of beautiful uh like wow. Blu-rays here That's of awesome. Obayashi's. Um, these are some eighties films. So there's um. There's a little girl who conquered time, which is one I would probably say is maybe one to jump onto mm. after House. It's kind of got similar vibes, but it also runs into the melodrama elements that he's sort of most sort of known for across his career. Yeah. Like he has a lot of melodrama films. Uh, and what else is in there? There's um, the Island Closest to Heaven, which is like a cute little holiday film, like with like no effects at all. It's just a pure like she goes to an island and, and learns about herself, and it's cute. Um, it's really sweet. Uh, there's his motorbike, her island, which is like the, a film like of like being in your twenties and trying to figure shit out and like uh, falling in love and stuff. 
uh, and then what was the other one? The other one in here is um, School in the Crosshairs, which I, I, I'm planning to revisit like this week because yeah. um, it's a film I first watched and I wasn't into it. And I and it's because the subtitles weren't good. So hopefully with this Blu-ray, gotcha. th- these actually have proper subtitles. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, also I think uh, earlier this week I watched um, other Obayashi's uh, for the first time. There was The Rocking Horseman, which I think is a great one. I think I would probably push for that one as well as like a like a jump onto that one. So it's a, it's a film about um, these high school boys who start a, a band together, and it's about just them sort mm-hmm. of like being in a small town and not everyone believes in them, but they sort of prove themselves, and it's just a nice feel good film. Yeah, it um, reminds me made, that reminds me of Sing Street. Mm-hmm. Um, that came out a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's that's the, the I, I watched. It, I was like, this is like Sing Street. Yeah, I've been um, trying to get yeah. uh, Kay's going to watch that soon. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the Rocking Horseman's great. Not enough I think people you, paid if... attention to Begin Again, so I'm mad. Mm. Yeah, I watched um, Begin Again after, you... but I loved it as well. Yeah, if you like Sing Street, yeah, well, um... you're just hopping on the hype train after everybody. Why don't you just get on board beforehand? Come on. <laughs> Why do you like this? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to be a hipster about about stuff that I know is good. Yeah, and <laughs> so that was Rocking Horseman, was it? The Rocking Horseman. I mean, I can I could send it out to you. If you yeah, yeah. So dead I, 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 I would be very like yeah. Uh, we yeah, can I'll also post up as well. Like if you liked House, check out these. Yeah, yeah truly. Um, and uh, another one. I think I think this might be my second favorite Obayashi, which is called Chizuko's Younger Sister. Um, I was just completely torn apart emotionally by this film. I, it was just such a, a great experience. I, I really loved that one. So, those the, that's what I've been watching lately. There's a awesome. lot of stuff there. Sorry. Yeah, dude. Like it's, it's <laughs> no, it's, it's beautiful. Weird. All that stuff sounds legit. I mean, again, what I like about this is I've had nothing that um, like like I I know very little about this filmmaker. I know very little about this side yeah. of film. Oh, mm-hmm. dude, so it's really does, cool the, to hear. That's the thing. Is like it's like. For Obayashi, House is like the only film that's like hit somewhat of a mainstream, and you've referred to it as the film no one's heard of. And I'm like, I don't get this is like like fairly well known on Letterbox, but like, I mean, outside in the general audience, it's not yeah. really big. But like, all of his other films, like review counts are like. 500 or under and wow. some of these films like the one that I mentioned uh, Rocking Horseman I think had like 100 reviews and Chizuko's younger sister had even less um, no, no one's seen these films and I think they're spectacular I love his filmography so like I, I keep wicked. going through it I'll probably yeah. watch another one tonight on the, <laughs> like, I, yeah. well you're on the train so no point in getting off yeah, uh, yeah and what exactly about you, what have you been watching Honestly, you know, I've been watching a lot of the inside of my eyelids for uh, for a Ooh. fair amount of it. Um, Catching up you on know, sleep—that's m- important too. Truly, mental Dreaming health, up baby. Some creativity. Uh, Never seen exactly. That one. Uh, honestly, truly. Again, uh, as most of you know, uh, if you listen, I'm a very I'm into actual play. I'm into a lot of um, like D and D role play um, kind of uh, shows. There was one that I just came across that was actually this is a, a web series. That a couple of people made um, that I think I'd rather draw attention to, which is called sure. uh, The Party. Okay. Um, and it's uh, basically what it is, is if somebody in response to the D&D movie kind of took the, the prompt of if I had to do something that essentially tried to encapsulate what D&D means, mm-hmm. how would you do it? Like, mm-hmm. it's not just about the stories you tell, it's about the community you form. And so they did the kind of like a comedy web series about like a newcomer coming into a D&D party. Um, and kind of about basically the rooming situation and how the stories we tell also how it impacts life and kind of is quasi mm. therapeutic to people. And it's, it's a, it's a self-funded, you know, grassroots web series on YouTube called the party, check it out, give them a subscribe. Awesome. Um, it, it's, it's, it's like, it's very, very good. Um, yeah. it, it, like it kind of captures it with comedy and wit, but com, com like it does capture that essence of why when people say they play D, why that feels so special when they say that and it's not like oh i play video games mm. you know it's like it's 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 a very different thing um yeah. with that they're also on dimension 20 we're getting to the finale of the ravening war where the most nerdy sentence i've ever said <laughs> came in Where? the concept of of they are uh, matt mercer concludes this mini arc uh that brendan lee mulligan started in a crowd of candy and the people who the five people who get that no kudos to you you're my favorite this yeah. honestly is more of a shout out to spooky and kit yeah because they know this shit and i'm like i feel solidarity with them awesome. but nonetheless uh that's pretty cool um 
just fantastic overall. Again, across the Spider-Verse uh, was great. I'm getting very excited that Oppenheimer and Barbie are coming out soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, just kind of gearing up right for that. There. Oh, it's going to be so good. Uh, yeah, that's But, guys, um, with well, that said, uh, obviously, uh, Jim, where can we find you? Where can we find you on social uh, media? I'm under Nalbus everywhere, N-A-L-B-I-S. Why? About movies. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I we love... won't do that again. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this, this is actually uh, related to uh, uh, how the nuclear uh, warfare and, and uh, the uh, self. Interesting. Self. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Yes. Anyway. I am ending the TikTok live. And ju- <laughs> <laughs> no, um, um, but I'm primarily on uh, Letterbox. I, that's where I'm at, and I, that's where I want people to be like follow me because that's where I love to talk and talk about like everything I watch. Um, I'm always trying to find the next thing to be obsessed with. Um, trying to watch more like 70s exploitation Japanese films and stuff like that. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's where I'm at, and everywhere is the same name. I think except for TikTok, it's Nalbus underscore. Someone bloody got it. That they was me. Of it. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. You, you can. Yeah, I stole it from you. you. Can. Yeah, uh, I thought also, I'd, I'd flip the cards on the white person. I'm kidding. Well, well that's fair enough. But, uh, you know, l- listen, always got to gotta flip the cards on them white people, you know? Um, they're not, they're, they're, they're no good. Get uh, but t- Where can we find but you, I will say, uh, well, first up, before, uh, just a l- little thing yeah. on Jim's account. Uh, he has the best thumbnails of the business, and I, I, I aspire oh, yeah. to that level of, uh, of um, intricacy in art, art, like... Truly, if you go onto his page, oh, yeah. watch the videos, but go there for the thumbnails. Yeah, and, the videos are um, impeccably I'm a, I'm a graphic edited. Designer. Go to my, go I can't to my speak web. to the content. All I can speak to is the... Yeah, go, to my, go to my website. Uh, I think now the stop... Uh, what is it? Uh, squarespace.com. I, I, I edit and graphic design. Hire me! Please. Absolutely, truly. Like uh, His work is incredible. Yeah. Uh, so if you want your videos to look like that, check out now now, um, at, obviously, at Movie K Man the Third, you can find me on uh, at Movie Man Opinions on anything. You can find me uh, at Movie Man Opinion on Twitter uh, because I have one opinion, and that's the Bad Batch is awesome and is art. And so, uh, right. now, where can people find you, you sexy birthday man? <laughs> I'm an old man. You're looking a day older. You're looking. Re- you're looking old, man. That's rude. Looking old. You're starting to see the lines. That's really rude. Um, well, ah, that's a, that's that's like a lot of people are into daddies these days. You don't <laughs> want to. Um, best thing you can do if you want to find me is uh, on second thought on Instagram because that's where the name is correct. And then through there you'll find the link tree, which will take you to all the other ones. Because I thought it was a unique name, but apparently it's not. So on Twitter yeah. it's like zero in second thought, and then on TikTok it's like on underscore second underscore like it's, just, it's annoying. So Instagram and then uh, use the link tree to find me. Um, next week we'll be doing an episode of Bruising Bullshit, so it'll be Bruising Bullshit number four. We're going to have a return guest, which is JJ, um, who's Lady Dragon JJ on TikTok. Uh, she brought us Let the Right One In in season one and um, Pride and Prejudice for season two, so she's been great. Uh, and she will be joining uh, Star Wars Facts Guy, Tate, as the four of us um, talk about Better Call Soul and do a series retrospective and answer the age-old question, is it actually better than Breaking Bad? Never seen him. Well. And on that note... So, uh, um, if you guys... Are... As we have absolutely undone all of Jim's credibility on this podcast in the last uh, in the last couple seconds of it. Uh, truly, Jim, hey. thank you for being here. Honestly, yeah. I love this. I cannot wait for you to bring another one of these because this yeah. is the kind yeah, of stuff I'll, I'll that at least why, why I wanted to be a part of this in the first place was to be able to watch films like this that i otherwise would have never done yeah so all all like all joking aside and all things like that truly this means the world that you brought this film and Mm -hmm. shared also uh part of why you love it part of why you have it because that's that that your passion speaks volumes and it's incredible and now it's always fine to see you and um you know well it's, um for uh, our listeners uh the podcast will be available to stream on demand anywhere you get your podcasts shortly after release um there are actually seven new episodes that went up so if you've missed the last few you can catch up on them um yeah uh and you can find us at one with the films on youtube tiktok twitter instagram um there we actually got the name everywhere so that was exciting um yeah and that's a little bit about us 
Um, anything else? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as, as always, we are one with the films. And as my friend Raglan says, the sight of his goatee made me want to run and hide under the bed.